Hello, everybody. We are gonna Hello. get started soon. You're Sorry for the late start. Me, Chad. By giving me a voice, they're silencing me. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. ba -ba -ba, there's right. that. that looks I don't good. like Thank this you, new everybody. Clip Studio Pain launcher. I don't know what they did. They they had a nice launcher before. So Jeff, it's like kind of gray, nice. Now it's ugly. Yeah, Mike. What do you think? Yes, Mike. Uh, unrelated thing else, PC or PS5? What do you think? I should just do. Uh, I I well, I would still PC. do PC. Okay. Yeah. yeah PC. I can explain yeah. why later. That's fine. All right. Good. 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 <laughs> I hate it. I hate when that happens. Uh, what? Oh, I for almost didn't open OBS. I was like, they're just having fun times. Fuck recording the podcast. Podcast? What's that? What's that? You yeah, we just we, this? yeah, we just been recording these it's and throwing them into the garbage. Thing. Bought two yeah. beers today. One of them is just this uh, nice light. Wait, 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 wait. Don't do it. Don't do it. Damn it. Don't. No, put your hand back the way it was. It looks like an Alan Wake branded beer when you had your oh, hand over totally the logo. Yeah, God, yeah. I thought, like, okay. Yes, it does. Sorry, there's no spider or anything. You're fine. No, I thought, like, I thought I was, like, demonetizing us by showing beer in the first two minutes or something. I don't oh, know. Oh, probably, but who, who cares? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Cristo. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, who's super loud? Is it just super loud in general? It's just, uh, am I super Christian. loud? Super I think it was Christian loud. screaming about something. I mean, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I think it was Christian. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah, the other beer I have is uh, a special edition yeah, from Great Lakes. That's 14.1%, so I'm not drinking that on here. That'd be no, fun. This is gonna be, be fun, nothing. Like I don't even know. I think I would just speak poorly. I think I would just <laughs> be a mess. Well, the last time you spoke oh, poorly, you were uh, cancelable. <laughs> <laughs> Inadvertently. Was that Terra Nigma? Uh, no, it was <laughs> Assassin's Creed 4. Oh, that one was bad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. Let me get the music going here. And I just, then I get I just, that's your, a good beer. Good beer. Good joke. I am running it ragged. Just nonstop over here. Oh, boy. Uh, hey, I've been on this. Uh -huh. I've been on this chair for. Yeah, you were uh, streaming. I, yeah, and you wait. And you, did you guys do the, the game club? You did the yeah. game club tonight. We did. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm here. Uh, yep. Yeah. It is just a lot. I had to I like you wouldn't be in that chair if you, if you weren't working. Get yeah, out. You're right, but I probably shouldn't. There's a storm outside, by the way. If you lose my, if I lose yeah, my uh, we have a tornado warning. Watch whatever the light one is. We have oh the God, thing warning. Die. So we'll see what happens. Okay. Is this I'm sorry for mine that has to be seated all the time. Your hard work. I don't know, but it, it, it's baby making music. Yeah, it's good stuff, man. Okay. <laughs> man, what is this? What is this game that here? Is this the the same playlist, the racing yeah. game playlist, or is this a new one? Same yeah, it's one? the racing game play playlist. Oh, nice. Uh, okay, we all we'll get started. Um. Let me know. Can you give me music? Can you, yeah, yeah, hang on. Yeah, let's test it. Uh, there's that. There's that. That needs to go all the way up. And then... Did you hear it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we're mm -hmm. cooking. Okay. And let me just do this so I don't well, Let forget. me check my timestamps. Second. Timestamp. Oh, we, I'm good. Clean slate. I'm ready to start, baby. Okie dokie, little pokey. Let's. Pokemon? Pokemon. Shout out to Pokemon uh... the Queen. All right. What, what is that? I don't know. I, I've played it. I can tell you. I'll tell you at the break. Okay. I just need to pull Isn't it from this the depths that... of my mind. Wasn't this a. Uh... It was in one of the Steam Next Fest. Oh, oh it's a newer yeah. game. Uh, it's like a year or two old. Yeah. Okay. I, I actually don't know what the full release is out yet, but yeah, I, I can dig through my demos until. Okay. What it is. Thank you. Appreciate that. It looks. <laughs> yeah. No direct. Looks neat. Uh, pe people have been adding me, asking me about a Nintendo Direct. Uh, so I, I assume someone must have said something. Uh, you know, a, uh, what one of those pieces of papers? Oh, that, is, it, that is, is it really all based uh, on that, that thing? thing? I saw that. I assume nobody took that seriously. Right. That's what it is. That's oh. probably what it is. I don't know if anything more oh came from well, uh, Nick, yeah. Nick said he was recording a podcast. Or not, I'm not Nick. I'm sorry. Uh, um, uh, Nate the Hate. Nate, yeah, yeah, I saw Nate Duncan on it earlier. I was yeah. kind of laughing. Oh, it's, it's got every. Yeah, it has everything anybody could possibly hope for. So absolutely yeah. not. 
Uh, also, just like do the uh, catch me if you can thing. Like, who would that piece of paper be for? Yeah, no, th- those don't exist. People right. never would believe need, those. If you want to see one, who of those. would need a like perfectly formatted, nice. Here commercial you go, Mr. Nintendo. Yeah. Here's the list. <laughs> uh, all right, I think we're ready. Mike, are you good like to start? This, I like on the bottom of it says 27 out of 60. <laughs> like, what were the first 26 pages? <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you talking about, <laughs> assholes? <laughs> oh boy. All right, let's start this shit. Let's start it. Uh, Mike, you're good to go. Mikey, good. All right, we are starting in five, four, three. You're busy, let's do this. Welcome to the Game Mess Decides podcast. This is the podcast where we decide everything about the world of games so you never have to think for yourself. I'm your host, Jeff Grubb, and with me is... Official speedrunner, Mike Minotti. In today's episode, Saber Interactive has extracted itself from the embrace. GTA 6 is the biggest game in human history, and it will bring world peace. And Battlefront is borked. But first, Mike, how are you doing? Great, great. Uh, I was playing even more Mortal Kombat Mythologies before this and managed to get a time of about 51 minutes now. We are sub one hour. Uh, If that run gets approved, which I'll submit after this show, that would be number seventh in the world. And there's still plenty of room to improve. So, yeah, I got that going for me. um, Is it encouraging that you have so much more room to improve or does it like that you're like, are you at a point where like, oh, uh, I, I got to play more of this game because I'm, I'm kind of committed to it at this no, point. No, the game's fun to speed run. Yeah, it seems so like a good I like time. That. You know what? A lot of people come to those streams. So it's yeah. fun to have so many people there. Like, right. It is like, wow, look at that number. Uh, I bet maybe maybe my next partner request will be uh, accepted this time yeah. now. Uh, you, you seem to have yeah. the market cornered on Mortal Kombat Mythology Sub-Zero, Mike. I sure do. It's a good little niche uh, carved out there. It, it, yeah, it, it has been fun to speed run, especially right now because there are so many big rooms for improvement. We're narrowing in. It's going to have to come down to like grinding and like small optimizations. Depending on like how far I want to go, I think top three is realistically where I want to take it. I don't really want to get number one for one thing. Like Sagat, who is number one, is the one who like taught me everything. So it's not like I don't want to like come and like take his record, which I can't do anyways. So we'll probably leave that alone. Right. It would be that would be like real long term commitment to get a lot of those specific tricks right. correct. And yeah, that's you know, certain I certain point. I got to play other games. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Again, yeah. Like right? that, it's yeah. not really realistically in the cards unless you became a full time speedrunner, which, you know, who knows? Right. Things you know, happen. A couple of layoffs that might happen. Exactly. Who knows? Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'll tell you what, if that happens, I'll be tuning into every single one of those streams because I think uh, you could do it. Um, All right. But as is, uh, we've got a lot happening. You can get more from Mike and me by joining the Discord at GameMess.net. Give us a good rating wherever you are listening. It helps people find the show if you hit that like button here on YouTube. If you want to ask a question, you could drop a super chat during the program. We'll get to all of them before we're done. Thank you to Carlos Ayn, who is insane in the rain music for uh, on YouTube for the use of our theme songs. One, uh, thanks to 1UP versus CPU for our artwork. You can find more of them over at 1UP versus CPU.com. We are on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and wherever pods are caught. Thank you to our mods, especially tonight, uh, helping fill out the rundown since I was so busy. Appreciate it, guys. Uh, support us by going to patreon.com slash game mess. That gets you access to the private channels in our Discord, the monthly Q&A, participation in our monthly game club discussions, one month early access to new episodes of Game Mess, Jeopardy, and Columbros, and, of course, all of our shows ad free all right big topics of the week let's just go ahead and get saber out of the way real quick saber uh bought themselves out from embracer and it's part of that wider story of these these companies are either closing down or, or they're figuring out other ways to get out from underneath these big companies that are have huge debts and saber is a kind of m- pretty massive publisher on its own underneath right. embracer with several studios they were able to take many of those studios with them, uh, as long, along with many of the games and the projects they were working on, uh, for about $250, $275 million in that range. I'm, I'm struggling to remember exactly what the number was, but it was not the $500 million. $247 million. 247 million? 
Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. So that, that's not the 500 million that uh, Embracer bought the studios for in the first place. Uh, but Embracer is keeping some of the studios. They are also uh, uh, continuing to have hands in some of the projects that uh, Saber will work on uh, uh, now independently. This is the result. The, the result of what, uh, uh, what seems like a couple of weeks of Saber trying to get the investments so they could buy themselves out. We heard about the reporting. Now it's all confirmed. And I just wonder what's your sort of position now on how you're feeling about a, 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 one embracer and then two how a publisher like Saber, a publisher slash developer like Saber, can thrive or survive in the industry on its own now. I mean, I feel. Don't don't feel good about Embracer. I have no idea what the end game there is, but aside from like selling off more studios or just destroying more studios, I, there's no way that this ends like in a few years. Like, well, Embracer did stabilize and rebound, and like, right. no, this no way. Unlikely. Like, this was kind of like you said. This is this was a giant arm of Embracer. Everything that fell under that Saber Interactive umbrella, right? That was a huge umbrella for them, and now that's just gone. So. Yeah, it's just another sign of just wherever that's going with Embracer, that's going nowhere good. Um, Saber, you know, their their future could be fine. It's they're going to have the same troubles that every game studio is going to have right now, right? It's definitely better to not be under Embracer, so that's going to help them. And they have a lot of talented studios that are following them. Still, a few are staying at Embracer, I know, but it seems like they got a lot of big ones. You get the sense, though, that a, a Saber on its own, if it does something like puts out Space Marine 2, which I think, uh, pretty sure Embracer's still involved with that to a certain extent. But regardless, I think if they put out a game like that and it does very well, I get the sense that that's going to benefit Saber in a way that it just would not help Embracer's situation at all. So maybe that's sure. a good sign here, is if Saber puts out good games, they are in a situation where, well, that pays the bills, that enables us, uh, enables us to greenlight other projects and keep this whole thing going. And they should have multiple projects that have the potential to do that. Um, obviously, not just Space Marine 2. Recently, they did put out Expeditions. A Mudrunner game seems to be doing pretty okay. Um, and then they, they do have uh, like some, somewhere around 10 other studios. They ha had more, but like I said, many of them are staying with Embracer. They have around 10, uh, and they're going to be churning out games still because that's what they do. They just right. work on games constantly. And they're kind of in that double A space that seems to be maybe more comfortable right now than the exponentially more expensive and unsustainable triple A area, right? So yeah, I, I think they might be in a better position than some. I still, so what's what's going on with Kotor, Jeff? Like, is that really going to be a thing still? I mean, I, the, the, I'll just repeat what I've always heard is that Sony seems very uninterested in anything to do with that anymore. And so that game that we saw that was announced at the Sony showcase or state of play, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was at a Sony event and it was, here is Aspire making Knights of the Old Republic remake. Well, that's already moved to Saber from Aspire. So that's one thing. But internally at Sony, they are not looking at that project as something that's ever going to become to fruition for them. And I think, and that's what I heard. And that's why I said that that, that game was done. It's done as it was announced. Now, Saber has continued to work on it, though. I heard that in a follow-up pretty quickly from multiple sources after that. Um, and so, hey, what does that mean? Um, I'm with, you know, Jason Trier, who keeps saying, like, they're, yeah, they're working on it, but does that mean it ever comes out? No idea. Absolutely no right. idea. And, it, you know, they, they, they did mention um, Lars Wingafers, who, you know, they are still going to be involved in Knights of the Old Republic. That's one of the things that's still part of this deal. Um. They've said, hey, well, that game's going to need at least more than a year. It's going to need a lot of love and attention. And it's like, well, duh, it's definitely going to need more than a year. It's probably going to need several years. If that thing ever comes out in any way that resembles how they announced it, uh, it won't be until like 2027. It, it's just such a, that's a big ask to remake KOTOR without some big backing like a Sony uh, right. I, I, it, it's something like, you know, Saber Active has a lot of talent uh, and they have resources. I wonder if they have the resources to do the kind of remake of KOTOR that I think most people are expecting. Yeah, it is. Um, It's going to be a tall order. It absolutely like If is. you release something that's just like the old game with some like slightly better graphics, I'll be OK with that. Most yeah. people won't, though. Yeah. Most people would not. Yeah, that's not what uh, that's not what anyone is asking for when they are getting all excited in the way that they got excited after the after the initial announcement. It's also not what they promised. 
uh, what has been talked about publicly is a full-on remake from the from the ground up with all kinds of potential changes, including to how the game functions at a fundamental level. And so, yeah, I think if they put out a game that it even just replaces all the assets with more with newer uh, remade assets, even that seems like it would be pretty um, short of what people are expecting from that. We'll see. I, I'm. I would I would wager that that game probably doesn't ever actually really come out not in the way that not in any way that it's uh, related to what they announced but um we'll see could be wrong. Uh, GTA Six is the biggest game and it's going to save the industry, or at the very least it is potentially going to be the most important game release of all time. That's how Matt Piscatella is framing that and he does that he couched that in terms of what this year is going to look like compared to last year in the United States in terms of spend on gaming. Um, He gave a couple of scenarios where he said, listen, the optimistic scenario here is the industry is down about 2% year over year. The real, like the more realistic scenarios and then the more pessimistic scenarios can go all the way down to 10% decrease in spending on gaming this year if things go really sideways. He said, he pointed out the big reason for that is tough comparisons last year had Games like uh, Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, and Harry Potter, uh, the, the the big Harry Potter game. And these are Hogwarts Legacy. Yeah. Hogwarts Legacy. They had massive sales and they were big budget, big, uh, big priced games, $70 games. Um, the games that have done so well so far this year, they have propped up the industry. Pal World and, uh, and Helldivers. These games are not $60, not $70. They are $40. And so already, like the big games that are selling a ton are not being able to replace what happened last year. So the comparison is going to be tough just on, on that side of things. And then also we're looking at a second half of the year where we don't really know much as, uh, what's going to happen. And then there's the factors of the Switch 2 moving out of this year, uh, GTA 5 moving out of the fiscal year. So there, there's these big gaps. And then he's like, a lot of the industry is looking to GTA 6 as like this bellwether of, can the industry support massive games like that anymore? Are games of that scale going to make sense after GTA 6? Because I think the assumption here is GTA 6, if all things are equal, should be massive. Almost no matter what, it's going to be massive. But is it massive in a way where everyone feels great about it? Or is, is it like begrudgingly massive where it's like, well, it's GTA, we're going to buy it. Uh, but this feels like it's missing something because the budget's so massive they weren't actually able to, to accomplish what they set out to do, or GTA Online is broken in some fundamental way. There's a lot of important factors uh, that go into releasing that game in a state where it can justify all of the hubbubaloo that's going to be around it. And so people are going to be looking at it, hey, it, it is, the, does that side of the industry, the, the biggest of the AAA, the Quad A games, are they going to make sense after that? And I think a lot of companies are going to be like, um, it's questionable. Like, is anyone really going to try to make a game anywhere close to a GTA 6 or a Red Dead Redemption 2 after GTA 6? Yeah, a lot of it makes me uneasy. Uh, like, maybe GTA 6 is the biggest, most important game ever. Uh, it kind of scares me that we have so many eggs in just that one basket, right? Yeah. I mean, look, it's almost certainly going to be a big game. It's going to probably be ridiculous in terms of its success, but... Like, what if something weird does happen? Like, ah, nobody's moving over to this version of GTA Online. Or, I I don't know, maybe all the people who boycotted Bud Light are freaked out that you play as a woman or are shocked to learn that a game based in Miami has a lot of, you know, Latino people in it. Um, Like, something weird could happen. But even if it doesn't, this game does, you know, it's huge and it's this giant success. It is like, okay. That's great for that game. And yes, like all that money is technically money for the industry. But there's not going to be anything like that again until we wait another eight years or whatever for Red Dead Redemption uh, 3. I mean, spoiler alert here, Jeff. We're talking about the best games of 2018 and a bit here. 2018, some time ago, six years ago now. That uh, That's when Red Dead Redemption 2 came out. Have games, normal games, even the top games really caught up in terms of scale and scope and fidelity to Red Dead Redemption 2. It used no. to be six years was this re- same difference. They somehow got more ex- like more expensive still, right? And we're not necessarily seeing that money on the screen in a way that we used to. So, yeah, this game is going to be very expensive. It's going to be a big hit. I just don't. And it's going to help video games for that quarter in that year. And then it's going to continue to help take two for a while. Cause that game is probably going to sell very well for a very long time. 
Is it really going to overall be a net positive for the industry in any kind of meaningful way past that opening window? I don't know. It's kind of scary. Yeah, and I, I, I think it is going to be a marker of something. And I think the likeliest thing that's the marker of is this is the kind of the end of that kind of game, or at least that being the video game, right? Where it's um, where the whole industry revolves around only those kinds of games. Uh, obviously, a huge portion of the marketing and hype and excitement will always revolve around these massive games. They just have a gravity well all of their own. Um, but I think that we're going to come out of years of of fewer and fewer games from companies like that and like you you pointed out even when we do get games from the biggest developers in the world right now they are spending more money to kind of get the same amount of game uh, uh that they always had so like they aren't able to catch up to red dead redemption 2 because doing that would be even more expensive and they're already spending more money they don't want to do that excuse me so like they're in a situation i, I had arby's for dinner so this is going to happen um i dare you blame this on arby's it's, uh, <laughs> listen, I'm, I'm enjoying it but it's you know it's, 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 not the other way um, i had arby's for lunch look at us we're beef and cheddar boys we're the beef sure. and cheddar boys everybody uh and, and so i think it's gonna we're gonna be in a situation where someone on twitter like pointed this out to me uh, and i'm like this is a really good point it does feel like the industry is kind of in that point where the film was in the 70s where all of the massive uh, 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 big production movies from the huge movie studios was like, th th that's all that we had for a very long time. And those just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger until they, um, once some of them started to fail, entire studios were collapsing. And then they were replaced by independent films in the seventies, stuff like easy rider. And that took over for a very long time. It feels like we are in that moment for gaming right now. And I think something like GTA six, whether it works for itself or not, it is going to mark, it's going to set such a high bar that is so impossible to reach for even the biggest companies that compete with Rockstar uh, that everyone looks around and goes, that's impossible for us. What we're, we're not even going to try. And so I think everyone's going to start looking for more independent and guerrilla ways to make games. We know how, ver how very expensive Spider-Man 2 was to make because of that leak. And then also yeah. because of that leak, like an early demo version of it came out and like this, like just like pre-build test thing had destructible environments. And I saw a lot of people's response to that was like, wow, they rushed this game. Yeah, like, the, the final game didn't have <laughs> like so even with the amount of money that it takes to make a Spider-Man 2, you aren't doing as much as some people think that you should anymore. Um, gosh, it's just it, it's just yeah, you, I, I think it's definitely a reckoning. We definitely can't keep doing this. Rock Rockstar is the one person in a position that can. There's maybe a few others like Naughty Dog, but even Naughty Dog in terms of the kind of games they make, they are big open world games necessarily. Right. But yeah, they're going to be able to make very big, expensive games that are the top of what they're trying to do that other people just can't really compete with. But yeah, I think there is going to finally be by necessity people looking around saying we got a. We got to rein this in a little bit. This arms race is going nowhere except destruction. Uh, and then uh, Battlefront, uh, we, you know, we'll, uh, we could talk a little bit more Battlefront and what we've been playing. Um, but Battlefront launched today. It's Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection, I believe is the name. That's the uh, name. And That's the name, yeah. People are frustrated because well, I think one for the price, it's a pretty expensive game for what is not a remaster. It literally is a collection of older titles. Um, but you know, some quality of life stuff in there and, and it works, it works online. So if you want to play these games online, it's pretty seamless to do that. If there were enough servers and the game wasn't quite as buggy for some people. Now I, I say that when my experience was mostly pretty bug free, we did have one uh, instance though. I think Sean, I think your game bugged out and we had to restart, but it was like my game run pretty, ran pretty flawlessly. And we played online. We had a bunch of people in there. Um, I think we had like around 10 people, uh, 12, 10 to 12 people in there at times. Uh, and then the rest was filled out with bots. And it just kind of, it worked for me. So I'm like, I'm not going to be like, oh, well, the other people saying that this is a, a problem, that that's not true. I'm sure it is. I just, I'm like, w I, I didn't experience any of it myself. So it must be a case by case basis. Uh, but I also don't blame people who are like, this is not what I was expecting. I was expecting more from this. And so I'm getting out. But there's been, there's been quite a reaction to this. So a little bit more than I was expecting. I think, hey, look, Jeff, we learned this the hard way. These games mean a lot to a lot of people. Yeah. I th look, like, mm -hmm. I do think they missed a trick. 
by not maybe doing more here. Like maybe just they should have actually spent resources really remastering that Battlefront 2 and um, making it more modern in some pleasant ways, but still being that game. You know, like even when, like you said, it's not a remaster. So when you're joining games, it is like you're joining an online game from 2003 or whatever. You have server lists and things like that. Um, but I think, you know, and again, like there's, you know, servers were rough or there weren't enough of them because maybe either they didn't anticipate the demand or they knew that there would be an initial rush of demand and they weren't going to pay for all the servers just for that when they knew it was going to die off so, pretty quick at some point. Reportedly, there were only three servers per platform. So, I, uh, so the way I, the way I, my understand, like the, there was three servers, but three official Spire servers per platform, and there were like twenty thousand people trying to play. So it's like right. at any That's, one time yeah. there was hundred and ninety two ish people playing but like, the game. Now, but you could do peer to peer servers, and that worked great for us. So it's like you could have a ton more servers in there. I, I think, and, and that's how these games used to work: is people would you know make servers and. You join them, but again, not what people expect these days, though. And yeah, there probably should have been more infrastructure there. And for that, that said, when we logged on today, uh, the first thing I saw was a, a couple dozen servers uh, from Aspire to the point where there were several, several with three people in there, uh, a handful more with zero people in there. I was like, oh, maybe we should just hop into one of these. But then we tested it, we did peer to peer, and that worked mostly fine. Like, I don't, I honestly didn't notice any issues with that, and that worked better for our purposes. Um, I, you could go online and play this game and enjoy it if you want to enjoy it. Nothing's uh, nothing is stopping you from doing that except for if there are bugs that I'm not accounting for because I did not experience them myself. But as far as my experience was, I had a pretty good time and I can see why people hold this game at such high regards uh even though it's like I I definitely don't I still don't agree it's like the most important game of all time everybody. Uh but it's <laughs> but I, I get never it. Said that shit. What well, was pushing that, that weird we can... that weird Thing. We got yeah. Look, uh, 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 we had a lot of pushback for not including it as a uh, in the Mount Rushmore of Star Wars games. That's where it's from. Yeah. And I played it. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I was having fun. You know, I love games of that era. But I still feel pretty comfortable with that take. I don't know if I put it on the Mount Rushmore of like PS2 era Star Wars games. Uh, still. But look, uh, I totally get it. Especially you know you were there at that time. This is a game that you could play. A ton of right it is sort of a forever game in a lot of ways back then uh i totally yeah. understand why this game meant a ton to a lot of people it just wasn't anything that i devoted a whole lot of time to myself back then yeah and it's uh it was, uh, when i was talking to sean when we were setting the stuff up it was um it does the way you, you all talk about this game reminds me of how i feel about golden eye and i i don't remember we did we do a mount rushmore first person shooters did i put golden eye on there like, I could see me maybe doing that, but even that's, like, a stretch. I think uh, we might have, and I think I may have talked you, you, you out of it. You, yeah. I think, you, yeah, you did, and you didn't put it on, on top yeah, of it. Yeah, and I think that's yeah, kind of... I probably didn't allow it. I think that's kind of where I would expect people should be with this game, where it's, like, uh, no, it's enough that I personally think maybe it could make this Mount Rushmore, but when we really talk about it, I could see why it doesn't. Uh, that said, I'm not trying to take any of the fun away from anybody. This, uh, it, it was a very good time. It's, uh... It, you know, in a lot of ways, better than better than those Star Wars Battlefront games from EA. And in other ways, I would sometimes be rather be playing the Star Wars. Or the EA, I was surprised how much it still reminded me of those. In a yeah, lot it was of ways, much more similar than I was expecting. It's a testament to them. It is a testament to them. Um. All right. That does it for the big topics I wanted to talk about uh, this week. Uh, we got some super chats. Let's take a quick break. When we get back, Michael, read off those and we'll answer your questions and all that right after this. It sounds to me that you hate Battlefront. I don't know. <laughs> well, that's that's the secret underneath what I'm saying. Yes, <laughs> we, we are both very famous for holding back our opinions. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna leave that in. Perfect. Right, I'm ready. Yeah, I'm me ready. too. Um, actually, give me one second here. You know, I'm that cut it when the, when they say like that you hate it, and I'm gonna cut the other part. I'm going to be the funny one there. Did you put on a Metal Gear Solid codec filter? That's, that freaked me out at the beginning because he's has been like, his camera has been weird. Yep. Hello. Lately in Jam Bomb. I was like, oh, his camera is dying again in a weird way. What but now the he's hell just, are like, you setting filter. up? What do you think Colonel Campbell sounds, uh, or what do you think Colonel Campbell smells like? Lavender. He smells Marl like Marls. a cigar. I think he smells like Old Spice. It's leather. Leather and cigar. Right. We ready? Yep, I'm bringing us back in. All right, let's go. 
and we're back. And that means it's time for Super Chats. Mike Minotti, take it away. Big Fresh 37 says you guys ever play Extreme Warfare Revenge. Dope. I have not. That's a, a very generic sounding name, but maybe it's fun. Do you ever play Extreme Warfare Revenge? I've not played Je Extreme Warfare Revenge. What, what the is this game? Is this, is this it's real? A, like an it's game. a professional wrestling management tech simulator that goes back to 1995. This oh, is man. not what I was expecting. That does, it does, but it does sound like a wrestling wow. game. Okay. Well, not what I was expecting. Okay, cool. I'll uh, uh, we'll, we'll make a stream and I'll 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 control it, but I'll make Mike or Mike and Dan make all the decisions. It'll be fun. I like that. The tenth Eric says I had to have my appendix removed. It sucks. I do not recommend it. What games do you re recommend while recovering from surgery or illness? Hope you uh, are feeling better, Nintendo. Sorry you had to go through that, but I hope everything yeah, is rough. well Sorry, on Nintendo. your end. Um, hope, uh, hope, hope you got a lot of ice cream. They do that when you're in the hospital. At least when you're a kid, you have to go to the hospital. They always try to like soothe you by saying, you're going to get a lot of ice cream, though. And I, I'm always like, bitch, I can get ice cream now. <laughs> when you said that when you were a kid, or do you say that now? I, I had a big potty mouth as a kid. No, I was terrified to swear when I was a kid. I'd, be, I'd get yelled at. Um, what games you should play to recover from surgery or illness? Um, I like something. Trauma Center. Yeah, I actually do like playing like the thing that is like dealing with the thing I'm dealing with. Like I watched um, a lot of like pandemic based movies during the pandemic. Um, I would, but I like playing one uh, those one more turn games. So Civilization, Bellatro, things like that. Things where it's like you can turn off your brain and the game's going to kind of drag you along and keep you playing to uh, fill up time. I'd play something that is both kind of chill, but time consuming. So Stardew Valley would maybe be perfect That's for me. That's a good one. Big Fresh 37 says, for the first time in a decade, I went back to Mass Effect 3 multiplayer. Unbelievable how it holds up. Still getting full games without waiting. EA is criminal for not having a current version going. Yeah, a lot of people still do hold a torch for that multiplayer mode. Um, so uh, it is a shame that we almost certainly will not get something like that in the next Mass Effect because you can't just release a multiplayer mode, right? You'd have to be like, well, we'd have to support this forever. And that was even a concern back then right. a, a bit, right? Like this was kind of at the beginning of these every game having a live service component. But the next, like, the, I don't know. Do you think there's a chance that Max Effect has a successor to the a, Mass Effect Three Horde mode thing? There's a chance. Um, when Legendary Edition was coming out, the collection, um, I remember people asking, like, will there be a new version of the multiplayer? And when I asked about it back then, they're like, no, the ver the multiplayer in three is still going, and they don't want to sort of split that or shut one down to replace it with the same thing, basically. So it's like they're they're just going to keep that going. That same thing wouldn't necessarily apply with a, a new Mass Effect, so maybe they would do it. Um, but my guess is probably not because it's a lot of extra work. And you're right. These days, how do you justify doing that if you're not going to keep it making money forever? Jason Fulton says, do you think we'll get Fire Emblem Awakening or Zelda Link Between Worlds Remasters for Switch 2? And do you think we'll get a new mainline Zelda game for the 40th anniversary, March 2026? Um... Mainline by 2026 seems unlikely. Maybe we'll get a collection or a remaster, uh, something cute like that. But, I mean, just look how much time it took to make, uh, excuse me, Tears, Tears of the, the Kingdom, Kingdom after yeah. Breath of the Wild. And that's, you know, it was a sequel. It was a sequel that reused a good amount of assets and stuff. And that still took, like, seven years, right? Yeah. So, 2026 is going to be too soon for the next mainline. Yeah, but I mean, game. If, if it's 2026 that something does happen and it is something new... A new top-down 2D Zelda from like Grezzo or something—that's that's possible. Maybe, but like, yeah. It, it, even if it's that team, though, like the top people still have to be involved. Still has to be like Anuma producing or in like the, the 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 guy directing, right? That's how those games usually work. They're not gonna have gonna give total creative control to Grezzo to make no, you're, their own. You're, you're right, but Zelda I mean, I think game. they would give a lot of control over to them, and then they they would provide the guiding producing hand. Um, to do something like a follow-up to uh, Link Between Worlds or something like that. It should get Capcom again. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm I, good. Quite you. I wouldn't be shocked if we see Awakening and Link Between uh, Worlds get remasters or even remakes on Switch 2 at some point, especially Awakenings, which people, um, gosh, uh, 
that, that's you know, the fireman freaks like me. A lot of people do love that game, especially. And Link Between Worlds, basically the same, uh, really. They, uh, they, yes, they, both those games should be on Switch or Switch Two. That would be great. Um, but but yeah, I, I don't know. I think I would settle for not a whole new game, but like the Oracle's ga- Oracle games getting uh, remade, just like uh, Link's like Awakening. That. I would like that. Dr. Ryan says, is that Mike sub hour sub zero Minotti? Thank you, Dr. Ryan. I do like that. Sub hour sub zero. That's cute. Did, did you beat it in sub- less than an hour? Yeah, beat it 51 minutes. Was that, was that earlier tonight? That earlier today. Yeah. Well done, Mike. Thank you very much. I am a hero. Uh, Sign guy Bubsy says, I wanted to be a hero. I want to be the center of attention. I wanted the glory. I wanted the fame. I wanted the pretty girls to come up and say, hi, I see that you're good at Mortal Kombat mythology sub zero. <laughs> Thank you, Sun Guy Bubsy. Cody Bishop says, have you ever read or seen Stephen King's Desperation? It stars Ron Perlman and is set in a desert town where an ancient god has taken over people's bodies. I have not seen that. I've not. I'll check it out. I like, this movie sucks ass. I like I like I the I like the bad Stephen King adaptation, so I, I really I like uh, Langoliers. That's a fun one. Uh, Ron Perlman watch, also should, rules. Uh, yeah, you got Ron Perlman in a really, really bad uh, makeup, and oh, that's just that's, even that's better. a ten out of ten movie. We should we should watch that Bad Dark Tower movie together sometime. Ooh, I'd uh, like that. Yes. I have a hard I have a hard time getting over Stephen King's like weird relationship with the uh, Shining with movie. Oh. <laughs> and look, I get it. Like you know, he wrote the book. He's allowed to be not like the movie, but I'm a little shocked he doesn't get it. Right? Yeah. Like, who cares how faithful it is to your book or not? Clearly, this is incredible, and he yeah. just doesn't care. I still have never seen The Shining. Oh, really? I mean, I can't say shit. I didn't, you know, I was a coward forever. Um, since I came out of my coward era, it's definitely one of the best movies I've ever seen, though. <laughs> Shining is great. Pretty good. Ali Miracle says, uh, am I in the minority thinking Stellar Blade looks like Midtown Mid Soda? <laughs> All I see of its gameplay on social is just uh, coomers and nutjobs praising it. Also, busy days, boys. Uh, <laughs> take it easy when you can. Yeah. Um, you know, as somebody who's like, I want to play Sword Blade, I don't care that the game was to be sexy, but it's getting like, you know, if everything else going on, it's being propped up as like, this is the game that isn't woke. And like, this right. is the game that's not afraid to have sexy characters. Well, so now it's like, well, it, it, but oh it's, God. it's like, and it's like, they clearly have brain damage because, like, finally someone put a butt with jiggle in it. And it's like, most people are beating it right exactly. now. Exactly. Right. Past Jeff. Uh, it, it's like, oh, you guys. Didn't play, you know, uh, near Automata. Like her butt is hanging out the whole no, game. No, exactly. It's like, what are we talking Bayonetta, about? We still get these games like all the, the time. The entire cast of Overwatch, but some of those Overwatch characters are gay, so they don't count. Mike, that is still no, they woke. Don't count. It doesn't matter that they're sexy; they're gay, so it's well. It, right. I mean, it's just the, the whole thing is always frustrating because it's just so obviously that's what it is. There's too many gay people and people of color and not. Uh, anime supermodels for them. These people are freaking out and unironically and- saying things like, the revolution is starting now, while posting a picture of cleavage from <laughs> Stellar Blade. I swear to God, they're just gonna like start openly having circle jerks yes. on X or whatever and being <laughs> like, like, this is us fighting like wokeness yeah. while they're we're fighting, fighting We're fighting the real it. fight! <laughs> like, 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 I, like, I don't, like, it's just weird. Like, go watch pornography like a normal person! Yeah, and it- no one is trying to take this away from you. No we one is mad about so Stellar like Blade. We all so we like this at- cute character. No one's like, oh man, this is bad. Uh, honestly, we no laugh- one's like that. I point and laugh at it, but I, I got sure. so mad when we did we did Mortal Kombat Nine, and I was just pointing and laughing at the ridiculous tits and cleavage in the game. Of course, everyone was like, well, "What's the matter with that?" Right. I like that. I was like, "Yeah, cool, me too." And like, how could like I on like how could no one like look at Dragon's Crown and not laugh at the absurd proportions right. of those characters? <laughs> and yet, no insane. one was trying to take it away, even when they were criticizing it. No one was actually trying to take it away. That's honestly, Mike. This, I can't handle what's going to happen with Resident Evil 5. I'm going to fucking uh, go insane. Because it's like IGN's like, hey, this there's you know some trouble troubling imagery here. And every quote tweet is just like, if you think this is racist, you're the real racist. Oh, so killing poor Spanish people? That's okay? I'm like, that made me feel weird too! What are you talking about? We just want to talk about it. It's just, we just want to like, have a conversation and they just can't handle it. It's going to be a goddamn nightmare. Rough. It's rough because, like, I know you can't play defense with these people, and like, yeah, it, but it just drives me crazy. And then you see fucking, you know, Elon like being like, "Yeah, something's been weird about video and games lately. I TikTok, couldn't put my yeah. finger on it." And it's like, wonder what it is. And the fact that fucking Grums, Grums is the biggest piece 
piece of shit yeah, loser. But he sucks. <laughs> he's like, what? He's this, like, is a, this is what you got? You can't find anybody else on your side? There must, by coincidence, be somebody right. aside law, from large that numbers guy. should dictate that you could find someone who just does it. And the, the, the best part about that is when I was like, this guy sucks. If you are buying what he's saying, like you're a sucker. There are a lot of people who are like fighting the, the real fight to keep the sexiness in gaming and all this other bullshit who are like, well, it doesn't matter. Like they know he sucks too. They're like, well, yeah. that doesn't uh, inv invalidate our our claims against well, that's, this. Stuff. That's their favorite thing. Is always like, well, that doesn't matter because even uh, it, was, it was the same thing with the first Gamergate. It was the whole thesis of it that um, game developers are having sex with game journalists to get good reviews. That was wrong, and they yeah. said, well, that doesn't matter because uh, this and this and this. This whole original thesis with Sweet Baby Ink or whatever <laughs> was like, well, they're they're ruining video games by turning characters into to lesbian ugly women. It was like, well, that wasn't true. Yep. Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Doesn't so matter. I don't know. And now it, that's about that. Well, actually, right. they started targeting this one guy. It's like, honestly, they just felt attacked right. by this thing. And then they, like, they just one person from right. one company was like, hey, do something here. And then they all, there's, it's just. There's a lot fall. of losers, a lot of idiots on the internet. I can't change their mind. It is going to be best to just ignore them. Uh, I have to vent every once in a while. You know what I did today? It made me feel better, Jeff, because I was like, this stuff was bothering me. I, I drove home. There was a, a kid on my street. had a little like stand up by her driveway. I thought it was lemonade. So after I parked, I walked over there. She was selling bracelets. It was so cute. I bought a bracelet. I like it was like two dollars and I gave her five instead. Hell yeah. She was so thankful. I'm like, man, is that can nice? You just do it. Little communities. It's so nice yep. to like be brought back to a micro level uh -huh. of like I, my street exactly. where you can actually make a difference and interact with people in a real, real human way. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is real life, not this bullshit social media Culture nothing war. that's destroying our brains. Yeah, uh, we w when we were eating at Arby's tonight, uh, we, uh, we dined in because Steph was in an important meeting tonight, so we're like the kids couldn't be loud. So we'll just go dine in at Arby's like crazy people. Um, and it was just us, and so I was kind of let the kids like go up and get the food and stuff. And the workers were just like, "These are the cutest kids," and it was so nice just to like <laughs> let them have this like fun interaction with these little kids. And you could tell it was such a relief from their job. And I'm like, "Oh, this is so nice compared to the insanity that's happening online." And at that same time, people are like seeing IG and be like, "People are saying nice things about how Hell Divers isn't pay to win," and everyone's like, "You fucking think Hell Divers pay to win? I am going to." Drop my pants and shit on the floor right now because I can't handle this. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, bring it down. Take a deep breath. Do That's anything. That's not what they said. I mean, you said this, Jeff, and I've seen other people say it's like, look, people just get worked up in election years, I guess. Yeah, and, we are, we're yeah. All, everyone's on edge for a million reasons, and that's going to be the biggest determining yeah. factor is that it's the, an election year and everything is amped up, and we are going to have to like get through this together, everybody. I, you know, we're complaining, we're ranting. Uh, this audience, the giant bomb audience, you guys fucking rule. Oh, God. You guys are, you guys are so, so nice. mature. Thank you so, so nice. much. Thank you so much. Honestly, it's what keeps me grounded in all this. So thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, next Super Socrates Chat. Socrates' friend Daryl says, uh, Battlefront Classic has me replaying PS2, Xbox era Star Wars game. Jedi Academy is still great. And these Xbox back compats are fantastic. Yeah. I think Jeff and I say all the time, it is the golden era of Star Wars games. I feel that way. Yeah. Even like the stuff that's not great, like OB One for Xbox, I'm kind of like, hell yeah, <laughs> <laughs> let's go OB One I mean, on Xbox. Yeah, I mean, like co coming out of uh, Phantom Menace for PlayStation One and being like, yeah, this kind of rules, and then having a just 50 different Star Wars games in that Xbox PS2 GameCube era, and all like bespoke for each console. Uh, yeah, that stuff rules. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Uh Next one here is uh, from, uh, sorry, it's from Tom Raptor. It says, Jeff, did you ever hear any more on the Xbox Shadowrun rumor you talked about in November of 2021? We're testing your memory here, Jeff. Yeah, I, I don't think I ever heard much more. Basic, basically, what I remember at the time was it's like they were interested in doing it. They were trying to round up the rights to ensure they could do it. I wonder if that kind of got derailed at some point. I never checked back in on it. That seems that seems likely, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, that was only 2021. Things could quietly be boiling in the background and still take another four years before we ever hear about it publicly. So I don't know right now, but I'll look and see what I can find out. 
Super Harmon says, I have a 26 year unbroken run of Superman comics. Super Dan 64 filled me with both sadness and joy. Man, that last episode of Super Dan was. I don't know if we, we've ever had more fun or we'll meet you anyway. I was having a great oh, time. Holy crap, was that funny. Uh, Super Dan has been more than I ever could have hoped for. It has been so much fun. Yep. And it's uh, it's a miserable game in a really fun way. Uh, at least, for, again, for me sitting on the sideline, just throwing popcorn in my face and enjoying the show. It's it's almost validating too because when you when you do say bad game, <laughs> Superman sixty four is the one I always think of, and I was yeah. like, "Am I being hard on this? Am I, am I a piece of shit?" And I'm watching this like, I, "No, I'm glad that we have Superman sixty four. Just like being that game, like being like Atlas and willing to hold yeah. that burden <laughs> for all of Just us. Just having its entrails eaten over and over. It stole yeah. bad games that's, from the gods, and the gods have punished it forever. That's that's Prometheus, but yes. Yeah, uh, no, I, I, yeah. I was going. I didn't feel like I had to say. I'm going to go with Prometheus instead of Atlas. You. All right, you're right. My bad. All right. Max says. <laughs> <laughs> This is a good Christian, show we the do here. Some chat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry. Don't make Mike mad. My, Mike ain't happy. Max says, can anything beat Bellatro for Game of the Year? Is, uh, you know, uh, in all seriousness, do you think no. Bellatro is your Game of the Year right now? No, uh, but it's up there. Um, I think it's like, it could. E I could easily see at the end of the year that's going to be pretty locked solid in my, in my top three, but I think things will move around it. Like, I think that's like a number two or a number three, and then things move around. I, I, I don't know. I think I think for you, that's the kind of game that gets like in the top five, right? Maybe not the top ten, not top three. Might be in my top ten. Uh, right. Yes. That, I mean, right. like as high as your top five. It's not exactly. You, you know, yeah. You know, I have a little bit of that Jeff Bacalar importance problem yes. with me. There's a little bit like how important is Bellatrio? Yes, I, I could be a little bit of a shit about that stuff. Uh, but no, it's definitely going to be a contender. It's fantastic. I've been. I still play it almost every day. Oh. El Grug says. <laughs> What's sorry, wrong, sorry. A, a tiny, cool little build I got today on Balatro. I got this, this Joker. Yeah, I got this Joker that turned every face car into a golden car. And then I got another Joker that uh, takes away any upgrade to the cars and add it to the multiplier. Adds to the multiplier, so yes. Vote, and it will, yeah, and, and, and it will turn like all the face car into like gold, and then it will suck it up, and it will give me like multiplier, and it was really cool. Yeah, I've, I've, I've heard that. I heard about yeah. that build from someone else, and it's like, oh, that does yeah. sound like that would be huge because by the was, end you could have like a like an X twelve multiplier or something yes. like that. Yes, I was fishing for that other Joker that makes every car a face car, but I didn't. I never yes. got it. So I was like, "Oh, this is like an I, incomplete build that I, I need I, to like experiment." I did have fun uh, today because uh, I was playing one of the newer decks I unlocked, where you get the double tag stuff, where it's like when you skip, oh, yes, yeah, and when you skip uh, an, an anti or whatever, you get like a benefit. And I had all these built up, and the thing I got was next. The next Joker is the negative Joker, so you get out more Jokers. So I was able to just have like nine jokers for the first time, like just all like <laughs> so rolls. many jokers. I just like oh, cool. I didn't even really have a specific plan, but I just had so many jokers right. that you I can, want. You can like, kind of do whatever you want. Yeah, right. so that was fun. All right. Uh, oh, Grug says, so it's been debated on who's weirder between Mike and Dan. Uh, however, who is weirder between Jeff and Jan? Um, by, man, the way, like, by the way, Dan's in chat. So if you want to argue. That oh, great. Well, yeah. Hi, Dan. Uh, don't mean Dan will hash it out some other time, but uh it's interesting because Jan seems so normal, and then he'll just call, he'll just say something <laughs> about his life or something. I, <laughs> I, was I like, do what? think that me and Jan are weird in very similar ways. I do yeah, think that. There, I, I I think pairing you and Jan and me and Dan together is correct. correct. I think that so too. is correct. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Um, I it probably is me, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's like we like you said, like Jan will occasionally break out something. If he broke out something that was just completely unhinged, that makes it clear that he's weirder than me. Weirder than me, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, Darachi says RGG Studios should make a Seinfeld game. Thanks. Hey, that would friggin' that would yes. be great. Someone should make a Seinfeld game. I'm sorry, I was thinking about Elaine's business casual outfits. Um. <laughs> Rawr. Uh Edgar Moreno says, I started playing through the Yakuza series at the beginning of the year, currently on five. Should I play Trails or Yeez next? Both are currently on sale. See, to me, both of those are series that, like, I don't know if I'd play through them. Like, uh, th there are so many Trails games, and they are all very long. I mean, if you if, if you want to devote that kind of time, then yeah, I'll go for that. 
Yeast is interesting because that stretches back, uh, like way back. Like you're talking about games like the original Yeast games. You don't really have combat, as you know. You just kind of bump into people. <laughs> They're like bump <laughs> games, yep. which might be He's fun. Not- it kind of sounds good. Those are both Falcom games. That's like the same company. Edgar's in a big Falcom mood. Did uh, you ever end up playing more of the Trails games, Mike? Just no, I just played Trails in the Sky one and two and loved them. Okay. And I got zero and I haven't like just never got time to get around to it. I still want to. From um, e- from what I've heard from everyone who's played them, like eventually Trails does pay off if you have played all of them. Right. You, you, to the point that you pretty much everyone who plays them are like yeah we know how ridiculous this is but you do need to start from the beginning whereas ease is kind of final fantasy ish where even though there's through line with at least eight all the main character a lot of people say you can't just jump at eight so it depends on like how much of a commitment you want i think that's exactly right like yeah if you want to play through and do trails you want to play some ease games like play ease eight or whatever else and you know you can have fun you can go back to more if you want to uh, Epic Open World says folks freak out. Triple A games cost too much to make. Uh, they say they need to be cheaper. Game Press then says Rise of Ronin looks bad and cheap. Pick a lane. Um, I haven't I haven't actually played much of Rise of Ronin. I don't know what it, the I haven't really been looking into it too much. Like, what what has the reception been like for Rise of Ronin, Jeff? It's you know it's it's a little bit all over the board. Um, it's generally for the preview period, which is the first two hours, has been mostly positive, as Jan pointed out. And Jan was like, that's weird, because the first two hours for me, I didn't like so much. And for me, I was like, I'm I'm not sure if I could put my finger on the pulse of this game in the first two hours. Um, so I, I, I think it's people being cautious until they can get to the review period. Jacob Bench says, I finally rolled credits on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth last night. At 90 hours, and came to the conclusion that it is my favorite game of all time. When was the last game that you knew was now your favorite or in your top five? Hmm, I can pull up my list. I know that Resident Evil 4 Remake is the latest game to get into my top 10. I think Mario Odyssey was the last game to get into the top five where I played. I was like, this is just absolutely one of the best games ever. Uh, favorite Mario game. Favorite one of my favorite games. So. Yeah, I think I think Odyssey is probably the best for what you're asking about. Yeah, um, the the clearest one for me is Breath of the Wild, where I played that game for review, and it was so good that I cried, um, and I was like, "This is the best game I've ever played." Uh, and and uh, after that, there's been a lot that have been like Odyssey. Well, Odyssey was quickly after that. Odyssey was like, "Oh, this is one of my favorite games of all time too." But it was just so clear to me how important Breath of the Wild was immediately yeah. um, that that's the one that stands out the most. I mean, I guess you know, I have Odyssey at three. My number two is Final Fantasy fourteen, which, uh, you know, I played through most of that not too long ago. And it was just like, yeah, and especially it's, it's after you play Shadowbringers. Uh, I think for most people, like, yeah, that's just one of my favorite games ever. And it always will be now. Uh, next one is Willow Davis. Where where were you when you realized gaming was a mistake? Ah, it's probably at Arby's. Uh, that's where I was tonight when I realized. So yes, uh, Arby's <laughs> is, is where that revelation is most likely to happen. Input video here says, thanks for calling us a mature community. Anyways, where did we land on the Pazuri debate? I was t- <laughs> I was vindicated by Sean offline. I'll have you know that I used the term. Wow. Correctly. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I was right. Not- the, the the scroll isn't going up and down, so it's not like you know, it's not uh, really. It's good enough. It's good. It's, enough. it's like when you have a mouse hiding down there, in, in the <laughs> end, you know, and they pull that out. It's it's a gag. I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> the Uncharted Wolf. <laughs> Sayonara, see. <laughs> the, that's a, a Columbus. <laughs> that's a Columbros joke for you. No. <laughs> The entire wolf says with the popularity of Nintendo in Japan is Dragon Quest 12 guaranteed to come out day one on Switch slash Switch 2. Do we see it this year? I'd be shocked if they're not going to try to make that work on Switch 2. There's still a lot of questions about Dragon Quest 12. They announced it by just showing a a logo. They had some vague language about like switching things up, uh, which kind of made people nervous and it may be being darker. um, But we really don't know anything about that game. But still, you would think they would want that on switch to dragon quest 11 got on switch eventually but not right away but even still there was a ds version of it there was like a demake right i i think that's correct oh yeah um, totally so there was there was a nintendo version of that right away so yeah i thinking about it 
I bet they're going to really try hard to make sure there's a Switch 2 version at launch. Yeah, I, I think, I don't know if it's guaranteed, but I think that's right. That I mean, if there's only one or the other, it is a Switch 1 version, right? Like, that, like if they only have one version of this game, it would be Switch 1, and then maybe we get, we get a Switch 2, or do you think it's the other way I around? I don't know, because, like, you know, it's not like before where... <sighs> I don't know how much this game's going to scale compared to 11 because 11 is already, you know, like running 30 frames per second. It's kind of pushing the switch in some ways. I just don't know how we can scale down a Dragon Quest 12 that's going to come out in like 2025, 2026 to run on 2017 portable hardware. It may be, maybe. Uh, I would put my money on Switch 2, but we know on these these kind of debates, Jeff, I usually lead towards these things happening on Switch 2. Right, and I go with uh, Switch 1. Yeah, I... I think the likeliest scenario is both platforms at the same time. I think, but I, I also just think that this game's further out than maybe you do. Like, again, I think maybe 2026. I don't think okay, the game's that's coming possible. out Switch 1 in 2026. That's fair. Ali Miracle says, I said, take it easy. Jeez, you the best folks. Thank you, <laughs> Ali Miracle. Yeah, we got shoot hot over <laughs> there. <laughs> Christian says, he's nuts. <laughs> that is a funny name. For a video game. Yees, Yees, absolutely. Yes. Why? Yeah, people are, we do we should probably clarify that because there's gonna be a significant portion of the audience every time that are like, what the fuck are these people saying? Yeah, why yes. yes. I don't know. I I forget why it's I think because Yggdrasil, the world tree is involved, and they just shorten it to why I forget why it's called that. That's yeah. my best guess. Ease. Yggdrasil is always showing ease. up and shit. But yeah, I mean, I'm gonna pronounce the why. Yeez. Yeah, I yeah, I just I just feel honest. better pronouncing the Y. Look, if, if you get it, guys, you're only, white. It's fine. Yeah, thank if you. your game's we only know. two letters and one of them's Y, I want to <laughs> yeah, pronounce and the it's Y. It's the capital one too. Come on. <laughs> like, why is the apostrophe there? That's what I want to yeah, fucking know. That's, that's <laughs> fucked up, honestly. It's not wise. Oh, yeah, that's messed up. <laughs> Phantom twenty three says, any excitement for the triple I initiative in two weeks? It's uh, something from the studios behind Slay the Spire, V Rising, Vampire Survivors, and more. I don't know too much about this, Jeff. Yeah, I, 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 this is the first time hearing about it, but that sounds exciting. Sure, I'll pay attention to that. T Bucket 23 says, Jeff beat Mega Man 2. Always played that during the Wii, but didn't beat it until now. Might try three at some point. Hey, congratulations, Mega Man 2 rules. Play Mega Man 3. Uh, it's very similar, but I'm better. That's, uh, hey. that's Mike's favorite game. It's my favorite game of all time. I spent I spent a lot of time thinking about how most pe pretty much everybody like agreed that Mega Man Three was one of the best Mega Man games, even better than two. Until like a quote from uh from from what's his face, the Mighty Number no. Nine guy, came out where he's like, "Yeah, Mega Man Three was rushed," and then everybody was like, "Yeah, Mega Man Three's not as good because it was rushed." <laughs> like you never <laughs> thought that before. <laughs> uh, um, and then Doctor Ryan says, "Y'all should play the first Tales to see the best RPG villain, Segundes. The first so Tales. This motherfucker. <laughs> My, oh. So, like, we're talking about Tales of Fantasia uh, here? I'm sorry. I, wait, wait, wait I'm sorry. I, 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 lost, I lost it. What's the boss's name? Segundes. Suck on these nuts, Mike! <laughs> <laughs> I just said at first you didn't pay attention. <laughs> I I read ahead and I was trying not to like jump out of my seat, like hoping that that would happen. Oh boy. Th th this is why we keep the good I doctor around. Thank yeah, you, doctor the Ryan. good doctor Ryan, everybody. <laughs> I did everything right and they indicted me. <laughs> uh, for audio listeners, Mike has left the podcast. Uh, yeah, he, I think he's retired, left. actually. I expect a statement from his family in any moment yeah. now. You want to do a break? Let's do a break. We'll be right back after this, everybody. Damn it. He didn't hear me. Fuck. Oh, boy. <laughs> He's just like, wow, well, what's Christian saying? Are there? That's not important. <laughs> uh, Victory Heat Rally, Jeff. Victory Heat Rally. Okay. And yeah. when did it I'll come out? In the, uh, I'll put it in the chat here uh, in case anyone else wants to check it out, too. Uh, it's not out yet. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. So I definitely I played the demo of this because uh, oh, this I remembered so cool. how I heard about it. It's a Platonic Friends game. And I think oh. it's one of the first ones that they announced. So uh, Platonic's publishing right. On. Okay, it's man. Cool. This looks so goddamn cool. It's, it's really fun. It's a nice little game, especially if this release at like ten or fifteen bucks. I think it's gonna do very well. Yeah. That's this... it for super chats. Oh, we already went to break. <laughs> <laughs> I think <laughs> you were gone for like fifteen minutes. I know. Well, I had to go pee, and I, I got to dig it. 
another beer. And oh, this is that game? bracelet I got, by the oh, way, isn't it cute? cute? Ooh, yeah, see the oh, smiley nice. face. It's probably not, but yeah, that's good. Do you? Do you I mean, is this a, a child in the neighborhood that knows you by sight? Um, no, not really. It was a few houses down. But do you, like, do you, like, is there anywhere where you feel like weird, like approaching a kid at their th at their stand, or it's like because it's a stand and it's out in front of their house, like no one's gonna be like, who is this man talking to a child? Right, I mean, she was, you know, selling these things. Yeah, like right. normally I would not go approach this child. And no, like, of course, of course not. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah, are you yeah. a child? <laughs> are you like Mister Minotti in your neighborhood? Do like people oh, kind of know who you are? Oh, he's and... a, yeah, he's the owner. Yeah, well, Penny ran away a couple of days ago, which was funny. And then the the, the neighbor two down the streets who got her was like, uh, did I kind of feel bad because she recognized me more than I recognized her. Uh, she's uh, like, yes, Mike, here's your dog. I was like, oh, thanks, buckaroo. <laughs> uh, I'm, I appreciate uh, it. Keep vamping. I'm getting set up. I'll just be one more second. And then no, she was fine. like, by the way, big fan of Blight Club. Yeah. Oh, Penny's <laughs> big breakaway. Yeah, that'd be funny. I got recognized at the airport when we left for uh, Florida. That really? Was fun. Big man. Yeah. Famous man. Big man. Well, uh, what did they recognize you for? Uh, Mike McQuanchy? Blight Club, mostly, yeah. actually. Yeah. Blight Club, I think, was the big one. Was it like TSA or just a random person? Just... No, it was just some person there with their uh their their partner. Okay. I was actually at the charge rod station swapping out my charge rods. Sure, which, yeah. That sounds dirty. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. No, I was working with my charge, charge rods. Rod. Yeah. Yeah, it would have been a bit odd to like answer Mike McQuanchy uh questions while getting well, frisked or something. I thought I was embarrassed because like they said Mike Minotti, and of course binding media response again is Oh no, somebody who knows who I am, I don't remember them. So I was like, hey, good to see ya. <laughs> like, been a while, eh? It's like, yeah, it's like, you definitely don't know who I am. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, great, good. Uh, okay. What's up, you? Yeah. Do you, <laughs> All uh, right. Dancers, do you think they'll let you on a plane in full McQuanchy gimmick? I don't think so. Damn. It depends. Is that I shoot metal? Because uh, you're probably I mean, not going to know with all those spikes. I mean, they probably would, because the way you're dressed, I would just assume it's your religion. <laughs> like, if I didn't know any better, <laughs> they don't want to get in trouble. Especially if right. you put the mouse on his forehead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what are you? I bet they would too, Dan. Uh, all right. I think we are good to go. Uh, all right. Let's bring it back out. Let's go. And we are back. We're going to do the best games of 2018. Uh, as always, it's a top five list. Me and Mike decide. We take input from the podcast producers. Let's get started with Mike Minotti. What, what do you think we should put on the list first? Or Red Dead Redemption 2 came out in 2018. I'll put one it up of there the and I'll immediately most remove it. critically acclaimed games of all time. One of the most high Do you fidelity. really like it that much? As much as no, everyone I else? <laughs> yeah, okay. I, uh, okay, no, wait a second. I, I do like it. Maybe no, as I much know as you like it. Now. I know you like it. I just... Some for some people it is like the patron saint no. of video games. Look, and, I think it's a nine out. I don't think it's a ten out. Right. 10, okay. That and that's I sense. Yes. Okay. That's what I thought. No. Uh, okay. Seriously though, a game I think I can actually get on here. There's there actually are a lot. I'm um, surprised. You know, 2017 again. You think about all the time. Lots of good games this year. I think I'll actually go to Celeste first. Ooh. Okay. Interesting. Not what I was expecting, but definitely deserving of, of consideration and yeah, i think we both like this i think we made a game of the year at uh games beat jeff when we were there that sounds right uh celeste rules celeste is a an it's all-time so great game yes uh, i love celeste right and you know like i love 2d platformers and what i my favorite mechanic in those games is usually like like wall jumping and here's a game that's kind of really built about wall jumping and dashing and just making that feel good it's got this fun cute little story and character moments built in between there and i love like you know the way the difficulty works like the base game can get difficult but like the real difficult stuff is this optional stuff that is fun to tackle when and if you want to um i would probably keep it in a similar vein or maybe a similar scope uh, i forgot uh, that this was a new beer i was drinking so i tipped it too much <laughs> and a lot of beer spilled on me it's never never great i um Recently, I've had Oopsie. bad luck with my drinks uh, from uh, uh, like fast food, and I'll just be like, I'll have the straw and the lid on, and I'll just tip it a little bit, and it's like the whole thing just spills out of the very top. I'm like, how full <laughs> yeah, is this thing? Yeah, I know, right? It's very frustrating. Uh, Into the Breach. That is the game that mm. I would put on there. I, um, Yeah, I really like Into the Breach. It is this small, condensed tactics game 
that does everything right to make them like get the most out of the five turns you get for each round. And it's not like, oh, it's five turns because it's a mobile game first or something like that. It's like, no, this is everything just boiled down to its its barest parts. And then on top of that, it gives you all the information you need to make these really tough choices. And you will be in these situations where you are trapped by one of these bugs and you're like it's a game where you're a bug. giant robots fighting kaiju and one of these kaiju will have you yeah bug yeah will have you uh held down and another one will be about to hit a building and another one will be about to emerge out of the ground and you'll rack your brain for 15 minutes on this one turn and finally find the solution where you can kill everything stop everything from happening and also make sure that you take no damage to your city and it feels so satisfying when you find those after like thinking about it for so long. And it's like almost, almost at any point, you have enough capabilities, and if you're creative enough, you can find that that find that perfect solution. And having all the information makes it really easy to do that. And then you know having only five turns gives you this light at the end of the tunnel of being like, if I just can survive this next turn and that next turn, we we can get out of here without taking any damage. And it just feels so cool. And it's it's also a roguelite. So you're like slowly unlocking things over time. And if you get in a situation where you are playing a bunch of the, uh, playing with a bunch of different builds and different kinds of uh, teams that you can have, it can be a very different game from, from one run to the next. So just love Into the Breach. I don't know why I didn't get into it more. I play a lot of games like this. I don't know why this was the one that kind of stressed me out. I loved the way the game looked. I loved its mechanics. For some reason, I didn't stick with it. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of like um, I think Austin Walker said it's like a dance, but in turn, like a turn-based dance. And when I thought started thinking about it that way, um, it made it feel like this these epic anime battles happening, even though it was clearly like just turn-based and not a lot happening in terms of the animation itself. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate came yeah, I was out expecting uh, that. this year. Uh, there you go. Really, really did live up to its name with that Ultimate moniker. Just a re ridiculous roster in this game uh it feels so smooth so good to play just uh just it really is the ideal form of smash brothers in a lot of ways i know melee will always be melee but just really is the best feeling smash brothers uh i, I you know there, there, there's little quips here and there the online still isn't great um that main spirits mode or whatever could have been maybe a bit more but it was still uh, pretty fun, but, but man, I could I could play this game till the end of time. It's so much fun. Yeah, I like Ultimate too. Um, the kids are playing it more and more frequently, which is a uh, kids fun to love see. Smash Brothers. Yeah, uh, they, do they play with no items? Uh, no, Mike. They happen to play with items. Um, they no. kind of just started up. And and lightning, <laughs> after I said that, there was a big thunder strike. Yeah, it's like oh, okay, sorry, God, God I didn't God realize Sakurai is there to judge you. <laughs> okay, my bad. Sorry, I didn't know God was a filthy casual. <laughs> Uh, Hitman 2. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hitman 2 oh, is really good. There's some fantastic maps in Hitman 2. Um, this is the game where they were independent now, and they sort of, like, scaled back some of the, of the presentation. Like, some of the things were, like, static images. I think this is the one where that happened. And yet, yes. I also cared way more about Agent 47 in this game. They, like, nailed that part of it, which was really surprising. Um... And then on top of that, it just it just has more and more of the great features you want from this uh, clockwork world and enabling you to go in there and throw a wrench into the works to mess things up. Um, I think it had the reflective mirrors so people could see you in mirrors now and that like made things really interesting. Uh, Hitman 2 is just so good on top of what Hitman 16 or 2016 was already doing. Um, and this is that much better. Yeah, Miami is such a good level. I love those yep. two DLC levels, the bank yep. and the, uh, the, bank is the really island. Good. Yes, they were bank is so some, some of the best DLC ever. I think uh, it's up there for me. And then, yeah, that that Miami I, race level is one I have played over and over and over and over so again. Good. Yeah. Yeah. When I did that bank level, I accidentally did the hardcore mode or whatever. And my friend was like just happy watching me. So like I was playing it so carefully yep. and that made it so much fun, actually. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's Hitman a game where, where um, when they find the opportunities to ramp up the stress, it just adds to the tension of the game and makes it that much better. Uh, God of War 2018 came out this year. Weird. This was a really fun. You know, it's funny, like the name and everything. It's it's a reboot, but it's also a sequel. And I think that's what's really great about this is that there finally is some character growth, a character change for Kratos. Putting him in this dad role is fun. 
Um, you know, just doing the, the over the shoulder thing uh, seemed a little weird at first, but it actually did work in making the combat feel a lot more visceral, up close and uh, personal. You know, even something like more gimmicky stuff like ah, it's like one continuous take. Eh, that was also neat. I think this is a tidier game than Valhalla. Even I think the, the the story is simpler in a way that helps it and benefits it. It's not branching off into all these other different paths. Doesn't feel like it has any padding. Just a really good time. Yeah, I um I didn't play a ton of this game. I played more Valhalla than I did, did of uh. Or I'm sorry. Now I'm getting things mixed up. Uh, I didn't. I, I played quite a bit of 2018, but not. I didn't finish it. Didn't get uh, all the way through it. Um, and I thought it was good. It's one of those games where I could see why people like it so much. It's not entirely for me. Uh, but there was not, nothing I found offensive or bad. And uh, most of the stuff, I'm like, oh, this is clearly a very well made game. So yeah, I, I appreciate 2018 mostly from a distance. Um, I would you, go Jeff? with uh, yeah, Tetris Effect. Oh um, shit. That is a uh, one that I feel uh, very strongly about, especially every time I go back to it. And it's like, oh, this still does have all the magic of what I uh, first experienced there. This is the game that made me um, fully reckon with the idea that games are not just their mechanics. It is the like the meaning of games comes from where the mechanics meet the audio visual experience. And when you have something that is still Tetris, but then all this amazing music and visual uh, delights are happening alongside it or in conjunction or in sync with it. It gives the mechanics of Tetris even more meaning uh, and it blew me away. It's a great game. Yeah, you can always argue what's the best version of Tetris, but this is a version of Tetris that's never going to be obsolete. No, because it's both a great Tetris game and is doing something unique and interesting and kind of timeless. I love it. Yep, I do, too. OK, quite a few here to choose from. I'm going to go yeah. Dragon Quest. 11 next uh this was the game that really finally did get me into dragon quest you know especially at a time where like square enix was basically uninterested in ever making a traditional final fantasy game again like we're not going to do turn base i loved how this does just actually feel like a modern version of a very old school japanese jrpg was still being turn based still having that party still having all of these really classic and in a lot of ways simple dragon quest mechanics just doing it in a big world with just a ton of different towns and dungeons to explore. It's a big game. Uh, it's a g bigger game than you even expect when you're playing it. Uh, definitely one of my favorite JRPGs. Um, God, um, there are there's still quite a few to choose from. There's some that I think I would like to get to as honorable mentions when we're done with the, the podcast producers. One that I want to go back to is Battletech. I want to play more of that. That's a, one of those strategy games that I enjoyed and wish I would have spent more time with. But um, I think the next game I would actually put on here is Marvel's Spider-Man. Yeah, Marvel's Spider-Man. Gosh, uh, I remember we I remember we played that demo for the first time at Sony's last E3 yeah. press conference thing. Um, it was just so much fun because it did finally bring swinging back in a way that felt incredible. Felt right. Uh, yeah. Uh, I liked having this giant New York to explore. I'm, I'm glad that they did jam a lot of villains in there because I like I like all those Spider-Man villains. Um, just like great versions of Peter Parker, a great version of Miles Morales, a great version of Doc Ock, of Mary Jane. I loved how familiar yet slightly different uh, this interpretation of Spider-Man felt, especially, you know, I like the new movies, but like that Tom uh, Holland Spider-Man is, is such a different take that uh, I appreciate it. But I do like how this feels a little bit more like this is just what Spider-Man would have been like uh if it was made now instead of in uh, the uh, 60s. Yeah, uh, I, uh, one of the biggest things I appreciate about the uh, storytelling of Marvel Spider-Man is not an origin story. We are well within to him yes. being a Spider-Man and being able to like just get into things was really cool. And that was one that I was happy I played all the way through and got to the climax and the fight there with the boss um, in that game. They put so much... It's a good final boss. Good isn't final it? boss. It's a better it's, final boss than two does... Yes, right. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Gosh. Yes. And and a lot of that is, you know, it, it meant more like it meant more with what, what is happening in the first one, because uh, I cared about the, the personal stakes a lot more in the first one. And the second one gets a little bit more muddled with that stuff. But, you know, whatever. Um, Marvel Spider-Man is also just like the kind of open world game I want to be playing. One with really great locomotion and a fun new york city with the the, you know, the occasional distraction actually there's a ton of distractions in the first spider-man um but i didn't feel need Maybe to do them all. that was fine yeah exactly 
The Messenger came out this year. This studio is getting a lot of love now because uh, they did Sea of Stars, which is actually in the same universe as this game. This game is really fun because it starts out as a kind of 8-bit inspired, almost a Ninja Gaiden style game. And then halfway through, it opens up into being more of a Metroidvania. It even sort of shifts the aesthetics into the 16-bit world. Uh, just really clever design, really great feeling platforming. Uh, I think it's still probably one of the more underappreciated Switch games, although I think a lot of people do know about this one now. I think it slowly has built up a pretty good audience. I think Sea of Stars' success probably helped it. Um, the last one I feel like I really need to get on here is uh, Return of the Ober Den. Um, I thought you might bring that one up. Yeah, I, uh, I, I adore this game. Um, it is well into my wheelhouse in terms of the kind of bullshit that I like. Um, mysteries, detective stuff. Uh, the game is mostly played in your head. It gives you information, and then you need to uh, do the in 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 inferential and, and uh, deterministic work of putting the pieces together and then coming back to the game and saying, well, what did you figure out in your head? And, and the game's like, yes, that's correct. That is a really cool process. And this is one of the better games at doing that. Uh, big fan of Return of the Ober Den. A couple more I want to mention here. Astro Bot Rescue Mission oh, is probably one. still the best VR game. Like that or Half-Life Alex. Um, it's nuts that it's kind of stuck on PlayStation VR. Of like all the games that S the Sony should release on PC, <laughs> please this that one. Rule. Uh, God, Rescue Mission is so much fun. Um, then uh, Mega Man Eleven. I got I'm contractually obligated to bring a Mega Man since he's such an important character. Jeff, you know, the series has sold over forty million copies. He was the third uh, third party character to be added to Smash Brothers. Sixty five percent yeah, of the Giant Bomb audience also agrees, Mike. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a super majority, I believe. That's right, right? Uh -huh, that's yeah. how it works. Um, hey, Mega Man Eleven is a ton of fun. Um, I love the dual gear system. Uh, I love how it, like the one gear slows things down, so it's kind of like helps in an easy mode sort of way because you don't ever actually need to use it, and it kind of feels good after you played it a few times and you don't need to use that one anymore. And you can kind of go through these sections that you thought you needed to slow down. But actually, if you kind of learn those patterns, you have some muscle memory, you can get through it. Uh, actually, some of my favorite boss designs in the series. Uh, I do. I think I like uh, Blockman quite a lot. A lot of fun powers. Tons of good stuff in Mega Man 11. I can't believe it's actually been six years since Mega Man 11. I think I deserve a new Mega Man game, Jeff. Yeah, you've been a good boy. You earned I've it. I've been a good boy. You're, I've been you're speed you're running, running Mortal, Mortal Kombat, Kombat mythology. Yeah, come on. What I mean, more do, more David, do you want from you? Capcom been talking... Capcom been talking a lot about Mega Man and not doing anything about it other than like, you have a fucking skin on... Yeah, the, we've kind of remasters and other things. They're, they're going to do something. They'll do something with Mega Man. I think a lot of people are going to start realizing that actually a video game that can sell like 1.5 million copies and not cost $300 million is a good thing. And I think people might want to make more of those. Uh, any more before I get to the podcast producers? Mike? Let's look at the podcast producers. I am uh, spent. All right. Give me uh, one moment while I get that set up. There's also a suggestion on the Super Chats. Okay. We'll, we'll get to that too. Okay. All right, there we are. Uh, let's start here with Slain, who says Red Dead Redemption 2, colon, fuck you, grub. Wait, what the hell? <laughs> that's a pretty good edit. Yeah, it's a really good edit. It uses the, the right <laughs> font and everything. Um, that's good. I wouldn't even notice. I'll, I'll put that as my uh, my wallpaper on Windows here. Um, Super Harmon says Dragon Quest XI. Uh, Bench JC says Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Mr. Buller says God of War. Uh, wow, it's... Okay, Bugadilla says, for real this time, Dead Cells. Did Dead Cells come out in 1.0 oh. this year? I believe Dead Cells 1.0 yeah. is in 2018. Okay. That's correct. We'll consider yes. that for sure. Re remember the Twitch integration with Dead Cells? That was pretty fun. Oh, that's fun. right. Yeah, uh, that was cool. Yeah. I wonder was, if that still works. Yeah. Um, Duminal Crossing says Mega Man 11, I believe. No, no, no. That's that's no, Super that's... Smash Brothers. This is I got it. I got it. Right. This is Super Smash yeah, Bros. This is the Ridley reveal where he kills a bunch of characters, oh, right. including Mario and Mega Man. People. Um, I... I was so, so like Smash Ultimate. First, they had the Everybody's Here announcement, which was great. And then at that point, the two characters I wanted Smash Brothers the most were Ridley and Simon Belmont. And they were like the first two to get announced. I was so happy. Yep. That was, and that's, I mean, you, they're never going to be able to repl replicate what it was like when they were announcing characters for Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. And so many of those so all time fun. requested characters finally came out. Oh to the my game. gosh. I, I still like to watch the trailer for Banjo Kazooie oh, and the yeah, live it's reaction. So good. It's so good. Um, two-time champ Beef Hammer says Return of the Obra Den. 
That's uh, correct. Uh, Ali Maris, Ali Maris Cerveza Cristal says, uh, Cerveza Cristal. and one for my homies. Cause I think this is dead. Dragalia lost, right? That's no longer a going concern. That's- yeah, that was Nintendo's mobile game. Apparently, they had a Mega Man crossover. A lot of people have crossovers with Mega Man. Must be a very important character. Jamie H. Christmas Eve says, Yakuza 6, The Song of Life. Uh, I, I'm, That's a good subtitle. That it sounds, it they've seems had, they have important. Great, they have great subtitles. That, this is maybe one of the, the best baby. ones. Protect the baby. All right. Yeah, the baby of your daughter, adopted daughter. Uh, Villain Mac says, God of War. Uh, Chaos Buckaroo says Greece or Gris. I, I can't. I can never. Remember. I think it's Greece, and this has it's been Greece. on my yes. back long for a very long time. It's a Same. gorgeous looking two D game. Beautiful Zoob says play Citus two, uh, which I think we will get to here in a second. Yeah, Beauty, Super beautiful Chat. Zoob also <laughs> sent us. Okay, all right, all right, all right, Christian, you can't pipe in literally every single <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> Citus 2 actually fucking rules. It's All like right, I know. That's why I'm about to read a name. super chat about it. <laughs> Good. I, I forgive you. Uh, beautiful, beautiful Zoop says, money to keep yelling about 2018 game of the year, Citus 2. Best rhythm game ever. A great evolution of elite beat agents and a banging soundtrack and a bonkers anime story, too. It's perfect, yeah. and it's right there on your phone just waiting for you to play. So I, see, I, don't even, I don't think I've ever even heard of Citus 2. Oh, so I need to check this out. I need to check this out. I, I don't think I've heard of it either. I will check this out. I mean, if it's like EBA, I, then definitely. I remember people giving me shit for, for buying it for 10 bucks on Android. It was like, will you buy paid 10 bucks for okay, you Android should. game? Mm, just, uh, you gotta I stop talking to your mom about games, oh, Okay. Uh, Always Be Clothing slash Cargy says God of War 2018. Fusion says Celeste. Casual says, oh, Bloodstained, <gasps> Curse of the Moon. That's a good oh, one. Oh, really? That was this year. That game That's a the D-Make, yes. This is the D-Make. This is them just making like a new Castlevania 3. It was so much fun. I played way more of this than I played the other, the, like the real Bloodstained game. Yeah, this is, a, this is a really great one. I like this a lot. It's uh, fantastic. It's the best Castlevania game we've gotten in a long time. Isaac Clark says Dragon Quest XI, getting a lot of love. Hosp- hey, Jade, how's it going, girl? Hosp says Spider-Man. Uh, Flobotron says uh, The Witcher Tales, Thronebreaker. Oh, my God, I forgot about this thing. What? I this- forgot about it so much, I'm not sure I know what this is. This is like a narrative. This is a what game, isn't it? It's a what? It's a went game, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's a, a narrative Gwent game, yes. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, which is weird. Uh, Dr. Ryan says Spider Man. Nick Turbo says Among Us. God, was that it's really Among that long ago? 2018. That's incredible. Man, Holy that's weird. shit. I didn't realize. I guess, oh, my God, it is. Oh, in 2020, though. Yeah, that's right. I was going to say that. That's right. It came out in 2018 and then really popped off a couple years later. Uh, input name here says Valkyria Chronicles 4. Um, I want to play more of this game. I played a little bit yeah. of a preview, and it was very fun. Yeah, I, I think I started it, and then I abandoned it for some reason. I should go back to it. Oh. Yes, uh, Lenny Cool Dick Denver. I was, well, I was figured we'd get to this in here. I was going to ask you when we got to the end if no one mentioned it. Monster Hunter World. Man, oh, Monster shit. Hunter. <laughs> Monster Hunter oh. World. You're fine, Chris. <laughs> you, you're great. Uh, <laughs> I, no, it's okay. I give you clemency. <laughs> Monster Hunter World is fantastic. It's uh, I mean, this is the game that finally made Monster Hunter World big in the U.S. I I love its aesthetics a lot. Still, I think aesthetically, it's my favorite. All oh, that colonialism, you know, Jeff. I can't get enough of it. Oh yeah, that's what makes the game good to me. Uh, that's. It's not true. It's just a lie. I don't know why people say that. It's not true. Oh it's God. a monster that wants to kill you. It's not real. Um, Christian always defending his problematic games, like always. Uh, <laughs> Crazy <laughs> Leia Cool says Monster Hunter World. Um, uh, Tommy Pencil says, well, I have to assume is Monster Hunter World. Yeah, Devil Joe, baby. Look at that beautiful motherfucker. Oh, my God. He's so hot. Tiny arms. Freedom McLiberty Ball says God of War. Uh, Alex says uh, God of War. A uh, scrumbly doink bingle boink is angered. Sure. Uh, Screaming Madden says Celeste, but has, of course, John Madden edited into the photo. Is that a disgusting Pittsburgh Steeler in there? Get that shit out of here. Get out of here. Uh, Willow Davis says Just Dance 2019. Uh, for the Wii. Be for the, specific. Uh, for the Wii. Was this the last Wii release? I hope so. <laughs> I feel like I feel like Just Dance kept I coming. I believe for... the last one was 2020. Okay, I was gonna say I thought for at least one more year. Uh, right. Joy Z says Last of or Return of the Obra Den. Oh man, I bet I could replay that game and not remember anything. That would rule. <laughs> I also think you could do that. 
<laughs> <Where are you? laughs> Teriyaki Blue says into the breach. Uh, yeah, Matt Rare Monkey says Battletech slash Yakuza Kiwami 2. Um, yeah, I should put Battletech on the Steam Deck. I bet that would work well. Uh, Giggy64 says Donut County. This is this was going to be one of my honorable mentions. I like oh, this okay. game quite a bit. Just a Ben Spacito. Uh, yes, exactly. Ben Esposito. Uh, the Rebirth Rebirth Wolf 5 says Octopath Traveler. Mike, anything to say about that one? Uh, I think I'll refrain this time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> mid! <laughs> Excuse me. Wow, that's way worse than if you would have just said something. <laughs> Excuse me. Weisman says Fallout 76. Mike, you want to say anything? Yeah, great preview event. Not a good game. <laughs> uh, I always daydream about getting into Fallout 76 these days. <laughs> Weasley, that would be a pretty funny uh, professional Friday. Oh, that's that, that. Yeah, we could have like a slightly <laughs> longer one where we can re- like do a couple of quests in there. That'd be fun. Uh, Riz Racer says Mega Man Eleven. Uh, that's uh, that's a good name, and also yeah, Mega Man Eleven. Mike talked about that, that one. Yeah, that's a good name. Uh, C- Jeff, you gotta stop teasing us, buddy. There must be some kind of development on all that Ridge Racer. Uh, <laughs> diving you're doing uh my, my contacts are are mad at me for pronouncing the name of the company wrong uh they want me to get, oh, get the order you correct you said so. that whole thing back jeff i did it's it's one step forward two steps back i'm Major gonna step back i'll take them out to dinner i will i'll make amends i will get this fixed okay. for you all right Be better clink says tetris effect uh bank ba king uh says shadow of the colossus the remake um i like the original better yeah. but I, I don't hate this or anything uh, I mean, I think I, I think I'd rather play the remake. I don't know. It's hard to say. I played the original while well. I liked this remake a lot, but I, I just love Shadow of the Colossus in any way, shape, or form. I could, I freaking can't get enough of that game. It's so good. Uh, Warden Cliff says on Rush. Is this game still playable? Because I've never touched it, and I always I don't know wanted much. to. I don't know much about on Rush. It's the I'm game afraid. where you need to hit the ramps to like land your car on the other cars to like take them out. I think. Okay. Oh, okay. And that always sounded good to me. Okay, this is okay. Mm. It's not playable. I wonder if I could like get a like local version running or something. I, I don't know. Let's just uh, play that uh, monster truck game where it comes out because that kind of looked like on rush. That did look probably, a little bit like on rush. Yeah. DMC depressed me crying says Horizon Chase Turbo. Uh, this is yeah. This is a solid out, out, outrun. Like um, I know a lot of people really like these games. Uh, Corley Pooh says Astro Bots Rescue Mission. Right. That's what that one's called. That's right. I yep. can never keep the name straight. Um, Adam GC says a way out. Did you ever play this one? No, actually, which is because I played Brothers and I played um, the uh, you played, it takes uh, two. the divorce game, right? Yeah, you know, I, I just I'm a big rule follower, Jeff, so I don't want to help these uh, these criminals right. escape they, prison. And... They need to do their time, right? But, is this yeah, a marriage game? And then if the other one is a divorce game, do get you you get married at the end on this on this one? Yeah, probably. Um, right. I I kind of want to check this out eventually, but I don't. Know. I don't know when. Stereotyp- stereotypically hot villain Eden uh, <laughs> says Wreckfest. Wreckfest is a fun time. I always like when we do Wreckfest th- stuff at Giant Bomb. Uh, we'll probably do that again eventually. Uh, Barf Spackle says Red Dead Redem- Redemption 2. I haven't seen a ton of that. I mean, I think we had a couple earlier, but not. not I think everyone's people. afraid to draw your ire. I don't think. I, I don't think so. I don't rule this Discord with an iron fist. That's absurd. Uh, GameCube yeah, Chris respect, Chad Grub. <laughs> says Pocket Monsters. Let's go, Pikachu. Yeah, I I was like, I thought Let's Go Pikachu was going to be a baby game, and then I had a ton of fun with it actually. So yeah, babies are a lot to have what fun. I know. Uh, Babies are allowed to have fun. Sakelin says Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which is a great yeah, game. Really like that. This one. has not come up yet. Um, no, I think I think this is my favorite of those three really big open world Mine games. Too. I still I still think it has the problem of being like like too big, uh, of course, but it's definitely the prettiest of them. I think the ancient Greece setting is the most interesting of the lot. It's definitely the one I would want to go back to. Uh, Wong Gifts follows that up with Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Uh, Hammond of Texas says Insurgency st- Sandstorm. Um, I think What's I, that? It's like a... It's an FPS. Yeah. So like, it's, um, yeah it's, a, it's in the like, Counter-Strike like yeah. orbit sort of thing. Kind of, okay. yeah. A little bit more uh, simulator. A little bit more. Deal. So, yeah. Milsim. Um, Like a Dylan, Infinite Wealth says Celeste. Yeah. Laser Wolf says, says Red Dead Redemption 2. Oh, uh, weird. At, now the b- bunch more are going to come in. Adam <laughs> Juice says, Boy! For God of War Boy. 2018. Uh, T-Money OG says... Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, how strange. Michael Riley says The Messenger. 
Nice. Uh, Vision 49 comes in with Dusk, which uh, I like Dusk a lot. Uh, it's one of those um, boomer shooter throwbacks uh, from New Blood. Weed Hater says Wreckfest. Seraphis Kane says Monster Hunter World. Edgar, Edgar Marino says Monster Hunter World. Uh, Bayleaf Moon says Forza 4. Uh, Forza Horizon 4, excuse me. Which was Seasons a, change everything. This was the one in England, right? Yes. Or, yeah. Okay. Because there's mountains. This is right, Okay. Um, yeah, that that I like Forza Horizon for a whole bunch. Uh JD Camp says Subnautica. Subnautica. I was wondering if Subnautica would come up. This is another big one on my back catalog. Me too. I uh uh and again I'm afraid of playing games where there are things underneath me in water. Uh so Grubnautica mm. will still have to happen at some point. We will we will do that. On VR. Yes, and I'll be in v I'll be in VR, Jesus Christ. Uh Zoomer says PlayStation. They actually have a pretty good year, huh? I guess PlayStation did have a really strong 2018. Yeah, yeah, Spider-Man. Yeah, sure and... That Spider-Man God of War. I mean, yeah. That's a good year. Uh, Klaus Rainer says Kingdom Come Deliverance, which I always thought oh, was yeah. kind of a corny game, but uh, I know a lot of I people never played don't like it. it. It's, it's, game it, sucks. Yeah, I don't know. It's not for me. <laughs> uh, Dorachi says Yakuza 6, The Song of Life, I believe. That could be anything. Yes. No. So uh, who's a no, sex the song of life? Uh, Alexa Agogo says Monster Hunter World. Uh, Big Tony, the Final Fantasy guy, says Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Daisy Man 2 also coming in with uh, Smash Brothers Ultimate. Wow. Fresh Look at, you know what, my, my, what character my eyes are drawn to here? I mean, Mario first, sure, but then like this Mega Man, right? Really front and center. Me right, thinks same he positioning as fucking too much. Link, I think. Trying to convince I, he, himself. He seems pretty important in this picture, doesn't he? <laughs> Mike, you won the poll. Come on, dude. <laughs> it's, look, I'm a sore winner. We all know this. <laughs> Fre freshly streamed games. Monster Hunter World. Uh, Mitsurugi says Dragon Ball Fighters. Yes. And that's a good Let's game. Let's go. It's a good it's game. A game. We, should, we should play some of that again. We should. That'd be fun. He's going to roll on Nick Boat now. Roll on Nick Boat. All right. Well, yes, what do I would want to play as if I played uh, Dragon Ball Fighters? I would just probably play as Vanilla One of Goku. Goku. Oh, dis what disgusting. Or Yamcha, maybe. Yamcha. Uh, Yo. I don't know now, but Jamcha was like top tier back in the day. I would That's bet funny. my life yeah. savings that Mike would play as Android 18. Yeah, okay. I love Android 18. Yeah. She's my I main. think that was my 10. I think that was my Budokai 3 main. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Android 18, man. <laughs> my Mike says that Mikey O'Leary says to scrub thinking is flat like Florida. Kinda. I kind of think that. Yeah. I'm just not imagining Colorado like mountains is all. Uh, Tink says the messenger. Turbo Sean says Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. And that does it from our podcast. There's that crystal assist trophy. I forgot to post. She's why it's the best smash. We all know that. Yeah. There's a lot of support for Monster Hunter Worlds in the thread, huh? Yep. Monster Hunter World. Yeah. Um, I never and... actually played as much of it as I wanted to, just because I don't know. I, I played a lot more Rise just because it was convenient to play that game portably. All right. I, I, yeah, go ahead, I, don't, I didn't. Sorry. I didn't play a lot of uh, uh, Monster Hunter World when it came out because it didn't come out on PC the same day as on console. You had to wait like eight months or something like that. It was something ridiculous. So, yeah, I, I played way more the, the next year when it came out on PC. And also, I kind of like more the, the expansion, uh, Iceborne, All right, the, Ice, the, the base game. Iceborne, is that really what that was called? Um, yeah, it wasn't called Iceborne. So, right. like, here's what we have on the list. Iceborne oh, sorry, finish, if finish Iceborne was in this list. Yeah, sorry, I will, I will put, put Iceborne if Iceborne was on this this year's, but no. Uh, here's, uh, what we, here's what we have. Red Dead Redemption 2, Celeste, Into the Breach, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, Hitman 2, God of War 2018, Tetris Effect, Dragon Quest XI, Marvel Spider-Man, The Messenger, Return of the Obra Dinn, Astrobot, Astrobot Rescue Mission, Mega Man 11, Nintendo Labo, Monster Hunter World, and Dead Cells. Wait, where did, where did Labo get on there? Wait, did I miss it? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> the, the only good okay, thing I'm removing Nintendo Labo. <laughs> Fine. The, the good thing that came out of Labo was that one guy who did that awesome Mario medley using the Labo yeah, piano yeah, yes, thing. Yes, absolutely. I still listen to that. That's, That's great. Um, all right, so no Nintendo Labo. That's fine. I'll settle for that. Um, hey, look, that's uh, a lot I, of games. I, yeah, I like Mega Man Eleven. It's not gonna. It's not gonna make it. We can get rid of Mega Man Eleven. Yeah. Mm. Not gonna happen. 11. Yeah. Uh, before, um, check the check the John Bomb video they did with Labo. Is one of the funniest videos. Yeah, that was that was a good time. I'm not in that one. I'm not interested. 
Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> All right. Okay, Mike. Uh, God, I don't like, know what I would even look, start yeah, cutting. Dan, Dan says Labo better than Red Dead Redemption 2. Look, yes, yeah, he's I right. know Red Dead Redemption 2 is not making it. You can get rid of it. It's fine. Yeah, fuck Red Dead Redemption 2. I love Red Dead Redemption 2, but fuck it. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, well, let's pick, like, pick, we'll pick what we think should definitely go up, Mike, because it's kind of hard to cut things now for me. Sure. Um, uh, I think Celeste is off, is definitely going to get yeah, up that's, there. Yeah, that's yeah, that's an easy one. There we go. That can go up. Um, I think Celeste, is, and I think Hitman Two is definitely getting up. I there. would, I agree. Yes, that is one of the five best games of 2018, uh, pretty easily. Let's go, Mike. Um, yeah. I listen. I of like the big triple A games that are on this list. Spider Man's my favorite. Um, I, I I'm like I like Super Smash Brothers Ultimate a lot. Just not the kind of game I was going to play a ton of, uh, so that's why I'm not like rushing to it. But uh, I, I, I think this makes the list. I don't know. Do you? Uh, what Smash or Spider Man? Smash. Yeah, I think Smash makes the list. Maybe number five. Yeah. Uh, I get it, but like I think Spider Man probably has a good chance. Also, more so than God of War for me, uh, Spider Man. Yeah, definitely for me too. Um, that's hard because like I, I well, how, like Dragon I mean, Quest Eleven son. And what about Monster Hunter World? Is that something you'd like that you would want to put up there? Because I'm not really. Yeah. I like it a lot. I, uh, in some ways I like Rise, and in a lot of ways I think the next one is going to really I be so the too. Monster Hunter for me for some reason. I agree. Um, I think it's God. It might. It's God. It's God. Yeah, I'm like I'm trying to think. Like I would like to see Return oh. of the Obra Dinn up there, but I would also like to see Tetris Effect. <laughs> And I would rather I would want Tetris Effect more than Oberdin yeah. personally. It is I a probably, it uh, is a, a a character flaw that you don't like Oberdin as much as me, Mike. But we don't have to talk I did about like that right it, now. But not as much. No, yeah. maybe I was just bad at it. I don't know. It's I like a beat it's it, freaking. Right? I beat it, but I kind of feel like I was guessing sometimes, and that's oh, why I beat okay. it. I feel like yeah. I brute forced it a little bit. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I kind. And I didn't think myself. there was. I was expecting a bigger payoff at the end than just uh, and you know, magic. Sure. Um. So okay, we, so we didn't put Spider Man on there yet. Yeah, I mean, because... I'm 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 down to clown with Spider Man. I'm gonna miss into the breach, but that's fine. I don't really. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, so I'm, if, I'll keep into the breach if it keeps Red Dead Redemption two off. I there. feel the, I feel worse about I feel bad about no Dragon Quest eleven, but I'm also not getting rid of anything here for it. And also, like you know, the game does have a better version later. Um. Oh God, I like Dragon Quest Eleven. Uh, what else was there? Would you mind scrolling down? I have yeah, to yeah. So it's the Into the Breach, feed. God of War, Dragon Quest Eleven, The Messenger, Return of the Ober Den, Astrobot Re Rescue Mission, uh, Monster Hunter World, and Dead Cells. I mean, I think yeah. if, if any of these games is going to get moved up, it would be Into the Breach, and then after that, Dragon Quest Eleven. Yeah. So you know, I think those are just two games that like. One of us really likes the other one. Does that much experience with? So as a togetherness. Now list, look, I, I played. I played a are. good ten to eleven hours of Dragon Quest Eleven when I was on parental leave oh, right. one time, and I enjoyed. Uh, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I. Good. If there's something you want to take off, I'll entertain it. I mean. That's. I mean that's that's the thing. Not really. <laughs> uh, not really. You, you really like Tetris Effect as well, right? I, you know what? I, maybe I wouldn't have until I think just this year. I finally like right. played through all of it on Switch on like some trip, and like I always did like it, but right. I really so got it's, into it. It's, it's great. really good on that Switch OLED. It really is. It's fantastic on the Switch OLED. Yeah. Um. Okay. Listen. In fact, I, in fact, why don't we put it above Spider Man? Yeah. I'm. I'm. I like that. Okay. Let's do that. In fact, let's put Smash Brothers above Spider Man. All right. I'm okay with that too. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Um, are you okay with Celeste at number one? Because I am. I am also Celeste rules. I love Celeste. Um, God, I, it's. I've not gone back to it I, in any real way since. So I just playing the hell out of it. You know, doing those B sides, doing as much of the challenges as possible. Um, the the core game getting to the top of the mountain is such an awesome experience. I love that game. I, honestly, I want to play. I want to play that again. And then there's all those uh, Super Mario World, I think, or maybe Super Mario Brothers Three uh, hacks that make the game play like Celeste. Oh, right. 
I'm like, I want to do that. Um, God, I love Celeste quite a lot. I mean, remember we were playing Prince of Persia Lost Crown. There were just obvious yes. Celeste influences there and how happy I was about that. I'm like, and yeah, the DLC is like, we're going to have challenge packs of more of that stuff. And I'm like, hell yes, let's go. Uh, if the list is number five, Marvel Spider-Man, then going up to Super Smash Brothers Ultimate at four, then Tetris Effect, Hitman 2 at two, and Celeste at number one. I like it. What do you think? I like it. There's a part of me. It's like, ah, oh, Dragon Quest or Spider-Man, but eh, I'm, I'm fine either way. And I don't know. Spy, like, ugh, we talk about how great a year it is for PlayStation. I think there should be a PlayStation game on there. Yeah, they that's, a, a, that's, a good, good that's a pretty good point. Yeah. I was going to say, no, we, we should move it. But you're right. That was a strong year for, uh, for PlayStation. And I always felt that Spider-Man was like sort of underrated that year where yeah. all these games were getting game of the year consideration and Spider-Man was never even really in that conversation. And obviously we saw how much better it could get with, uh, I think even Miles Morales, uh, but then with Spider-Man too, in terms of like just the game, the way the games play. Um, but still Marvel Spider-Man nailed that out of the gate for that team. Yep. I like all it. right. Uh, Mike, read the list for me one more time while I go ahead and put this on Twitter. Game has decided the best games of 2018, and they are number five, Marvel's Spider-Man. Number four, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Number three, Tetris Effect. Number two, Hitman 2. And the number one, Celeste. All right. We're going to take a quick break. When we get back, we'll talk about what we've been playing right after this. We are on the break. We can just go into it. Yep. All right. All right. <laughs> Let's just go into it. All right. Uh, good job, Mike, on coming up with the top five games of 2018. Uh, that means it's time for what we've been playing. And, Mike, I, I played some Star Wars Battlefront today, as I did, did you. And this is a game that, we, you know, we talked about it a little bit. Let's, I would like, you know, let's have a real conversation about it real quick. Um, this is one that our community is really hot and heavy on. They really like it. They are frustrated with us for not giving it the respect they think it deserves. And after playing it, I get it. I I think comparing it to <laughs> I think comparing it to to Gold Knight was a very like eye opening thing and um and really today it's a much better game to play than Gold Knight in my opinion it's hard to go back to Gold Knight for me this was it, you just go you fit right back in and you're immediately playing a really fun multiplayer game I think that uh, for like the big multiplayer games where you have like 32 versus 32 or something like that or that's a possibility. This one is maybe works better for me than any of the Battlefield games I played. Uh, I, I always thought Battlefield games were kind of messy, and I uh, was always like running back to the to the battle. Uh, these ones were just like, no, you're going to get back to the action pretty quickly. Uh, I I was really enjoying it. Uh, how about you? I did like I liked Battlefield 1942 and like Vietnam a a, a good uh, bit, and there's a, some of that. There's definitely a lot of that in here. Some of it is like some of the negatives. Where I don't know if it's a, it's probably a skill skill issue, but whenever like an, somebody on the other team's in a vehicle, it feels like they go around and just win the game. Yeah. And then when I get one, I explode in two seconds. Um, but no, I totally get it. You know what, Jeff? In a lot of ways, especially at the time, this was the most Star Wars game, right? Yeah. Like everything is here. It's doing all of all of those movies, all of these different characters. I think it doesn't have Episode Three yet because that wasn't out maybe um i'm not maybe i'm making that up actually i'm not 2005 sure. so it, it would have been yeah that would have been like just coming out i suppose just at least at least what we played like no no it would have been because we were at that mushroom planet where that one jedi died never mind episode three's in there same year uh so yeah it has everything and i you know you get to play as all these characters uh i get it it was a lot of fun it definitely it nails the mission statement of just being battlefield but with Star Wars. Yeah, we were playing. And I had a good time. Yeah, and you, we were playing. You pointed out, like, yep, it's just that music that you want to hear when you're yeah. doing Star Wars stuff. And like, yeah, they had it all in there. And um, it always rules. When I was building the server originally, I was testing things out. Uh, the maps are like, okay, here's the map. Here is. Um, it wasn't Hoth. Hoth was just the classic series, but there would be like planets like Tatooine. Do you want to do Tatooine in the classic trilogy or in the prequel trilogy? And you could pick one. So they like had everything represented you're right there's just a ton of star wars stuff in there so if people are hopping online playing this game all the time with their friends or playing the the split screen which i saw barrett and uh and blessing were doing on kind of funny today because i bet that's how a lot of kids actually experience this game just playing two-player split screen co-op non-stop with your kid with your kid friend after you got home from school uh 
And I could see that being a very, very good time. So I, I'm glad we spent some time with it. I do have an appreciation for it that I didn't necessarily have before. And yet, as you said, like, yeah, it's not yeah. gonna it's not gonna go on my Mount Rushmore Star Wars games. I'm, it's just I'm not. still very proud of you guys for giving a fair shake. Thank, Thank you. you. I, I, did, I had fun. I'm glad that didn't Oh yeah. I want to play quick, more. I'm curious, are you guys aware of the single player content? I started playing that on stream and I remember that from ah. the time. The single player campaign in Battlefront 2 is actually really cool because you start playing as a clone trooper and you kind of follow them through the movies to the point like where they are a stormtrooper. It's actually yeah. a really fun campaign for just, you know, having you fight bot matches in these maps, essentially. It works really well. Yeah, yeah I, Jeff, it's like the diaries of someone who ends up in the 501st. Okay, that sounds... I, I will play through that. That sounds yeah, like a It has, like, cutscenes and everything. It's pretty it's a, cool. It's but the other thing is actually the thing that people really like, though. Galactic Conquest. It's basically almost like a board game, um, but the board is All sort right. of like a Catan-shaped. You know how it's kind of like a right. hexagon type Ooh. of thing with, like, branches? You and your uh, you and the Empire start on opposite sides, and you branch out to the different uh, planets that you each own with your ships. You like move ships in sort of board game fashion, and you get points every time you win a match. And you can then spend those points to get up. You get new troop types. You can get upgrades for your troops. You can buy heroes to use, like Luke and Vader, or you can buy new ships. That uh, way, you can like move multiple ships across the board, and Ooh, then sounds kind of like risk. Yeah. Oh, I man. gotta check that out. It's that very risk. Yeah, I definitely recommend at least giving a shot. Okay, uh, yeah, I'll, 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 we'll that play would, that. That would probably be a fun like little switch thing in bed or something. Like yeah, that. I'm gonna throw it. I'll throw it on the Steam Deck, and I'll do that. There, That's Steam. You know, there you go. Perfect. It, you know, it really makes me wish that um. Actually, they they would just make another one. Uh, Battlefront Two was already quite a while ago. Like the the new Battlefront oh. Two. Yep. Um, I you know like that game got that game never had a chance because of its pretty atrocious loot boxes, but it was a fun game. I think they were so close to just really nailing it with a Battlefront Three, and it kind of I bumped think me out. They... We never get that. If they were to bring back the original concept for the old Battlefront 3 that would have been on like 360 PS3, the idea was that it was going to be seamless ground to space combat. So yeah, you would fight like what cool. we fight today and then you could get a ship. You would have like a pseudo cutscene, and then you would be fighting above the planet in a space battle. And you could was like it? go between them. Was that the one with like that the least concept art of like yeah, a lot uh, of stuff Sith for that, Obi Wan? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's one of like the great Bad kids ideas. game stuff. Um, yeah. I had fun, Jeff. Me too. Um, and then beyond that, playing some review games. Won't be able to talk about some of these things for a little bit. Uh, so that's kept me pretty busy. A little bit more Bellatro. That's still very, like, taking up time here and there. Really enjoying that. Uh, but yeah, uh, Star Wars Battlefront. That's what, what I've been playing. How about you, Mike? I took a, I'm taking a little break from Persona 3 to, to play Mario Golf, the Game Boy Color game. Oh, fun. Uh, well, because you know, I, I talk, we talked about this. Yeah, how I always think of that Game Boy Advance one really in a similar. I never really played the Game Boy Color one as much. It it is also just just kind of perfect, right? It's everything yep. you need. It has just enough of that RPG stuff. It's not yeah. bogged down in boring dialogue and like story. It is a little bit of it, but yeah, it's just you know you're leveling up. You have these like clubhouses to explore. I love just like having this little map. You go to the different courses and you challenge these champions to match games and. The golfing itself is so simple and clean, like the way that you're making me feel tonight. Uh, it just <laughs> as long, feels as long as I don't have to meet your father. Yeah, it just feels perfect, even though it's missing some of the, the like the top spin mechanics that we had starting in the GameCube games. I believe, you know, a A for spin, a B for super spin. Even without that, it kind of reminds me of how the golf actually uh, does feel in the OGO Turf Masters or uh, yeah, yeah. Turf Masters, right? It, it's a Man, bit that's, like that's, that. That's that's the ideal. A Neo yeah. Turf Masters RPG. That would mm -hmm. be the real deal right, right there. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, that description of not a, not bogged down by a lot of dialogue, I think we probably could have guessed that based on the fact that I enjoyed the game. Uh, but uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's also like my platonic ideal for what I would want from going out and learning how to play golf, where it's like, I'm just going to go out on my own. I'm going to try to get better and that occasionally I will challenge someone who's better than me and see if I could take them on and beat them in golf. And then it's just going to go back and, you know, kind of go to the next course by myself and enjoy it. And that sounds so pleasant. And I think, I, I think that the game did such a good job of capturing that right away uh, that I really hooked onto that. So glad you're playing it. Glad you're enjoying it. Uh, that's, that's really fun to hear. Um, good stuff. Anything else, Mike? Yeah. Mortal Kombat mythologies, but you know, we got a lot more of that to play still. You are going to be able to submit the f sub hour run, right? 51 minutes, you said? Yeah, I'll submit that one. Where does that put you on? This 
where does that put you on the number list? Seven. Ooh, okay. Number seven. Number uh, seven. Want to be so we're aiming for number f- for top five. But the thing is, once I'm in top five, it's not that much further to get to top three. So top top three is the real end goal. Once I get top three, is when I might be done. Right. Uh, I think so. We'll see. I th- hopefully, like, there's a day this weekend. So far, I kind of been sneaking runs in here and there. It's like one run. I, I, I want a day this weekend where I can really sit down. Right, just do like, several runs back to back. Like yeah. six hours, like just like play this game and really try to grind out right. a, a very good run. And you'll probably, you'll, I mean, you'll probably have a good run after that. But I bet then the next time you come back after that like long right. session, you'll get your best run at that point. I bet. Exactly. All right. Uh, God, I mean, Dragon's Dogma 2 is out here pretty soon. Uh, I'm definitely yeah. looking forward to playing that. Anything else that you're like kind of eyeballing right now? Or are you pretty happy with what you have and you're you know, locked and loaded on your Switch and your Steam Deck and all that? I, I'm pretty happy for, for with that. I'm like looking forward to Dragon's Dogma 2, but I'm actually kind of looking forward to some downtime to catch up on things. Like, hey, you know, never got to, never got to beat Jedi Survivor or Fomp Fantasy God, 16 yet. Yeah. Would still like to do both of that. So same here. I'm, I, I'm behind. And, um, I, I, I do need to just make a point of getting on the horn with you all and getting us back into some more Helldivers. Just, I know. It's so I, much fun. Yep. It's it's a good time. I did some random uh, matches this week and had a pretty good time with that. And I'm like, it would be much better with friends that I'm talking to. Uh, it, but it, you know, it still definitely works matching up with random people. But I'm like, oh, I do wish I was just hanging out with the buds. So try to make that happen. I might try to beat Penny's big breakaway. I'm making progress there. Uh, God, I, God, I, I haven't really played much side. of that yet. Even yeah, and there's a ton. I, I haven't touched WWE, and I want to play that. Yeah, same. So, I know, want to. It's too much. All right, everybody. I'm going to hit the button. It takes a couple minutes to get us out of here from there. So that means, Mike, I don't know. We got we got planned this weekend. Anything fun? I think not much, finally, which is kind of good i might see dune 2 at some point uh but i i i i, I could use a quiet weekend get and play some video games that's what i wanted to do. it would be hard for me to get out there mike but let me know if you go see dune 2 i would All i'm right. looking for an excuse to go see it so just I'll like you know loop me in i i know I, it probably won't be able to happen but if i could that'd be great i did stay up late last night cleaning the house so i won't have to do that this weekend and that that's go. nice it was a pain yeah. in the ass but it was I- nice I heard you say that and like about how you felt good about yourself and i was like god i want that for me <laughs> so I, I, I really need to do a big cleaning I, 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 I put it off for like two weeks in the house was just an absolute I, disaster so it, it had to happen i have a pile of floors in my bedroom it's not a pile of floors a pile of clothes in my bedroom it's not <laughs> of the dirty clothes it's of the clean sure yeah <laughs> like that's the that's the only marginally better if not worse so i gotta sort all that yeah, God. clothes. Clothes should clean themselves. I know. Tired of cleaning clothes, right? Someone should invent that by now. Fucking Elon Musk. Oh, super chats! Oh, we have more super chats. Oh, Thank shit. you, Mikey. Ah! All right, Mike, read the super chats. <laughs> Mikey O'Leary said the two hundred super chats. Thanks for. Thank you so much, Mikey. Thank you, Mikey O'Leary. God, someone's doing their job around here. Yeah, None man. Of you, none of you other assholes in chats. Actually, a bunch of people mentioned it in chats. By the way, gold star for Mikey, a fan of twenty three. Oh no, we did that one. The Doctor Ryan said that one. Uh, Fitzer says, "Is it just me, or does Tyler Breeze look very Brad Shoemaker coded on the menu icon?" For the my GM mode in WWE 20k uh, 20k 2k 24. Yes. Also, happy belated 311 day, boys. I will look out for that when we play WWE. Yeah. 20, what, what do you think, yeah. Christian? Does he look like Brad? He does. He does. I was thinking, yes. I was like, oh, this guy kind of looks like Russian Maker. That's <laughs> crazy. I didn't know the name of the guy, but yeah, he does. He's the hair. Uh, Nick says a new Locust Pope game just came out this week. I don't, I, I will. Um, I will buy this. It's on my, my God. I had it right here. Now, of course, I fucking lost it. Uh, it's on the. Oh, there it is. The the cranker. God, now oh, it's the crank game. Yes, the, oh, the, the play date. Another the one play one date. After yes. You brought the the first one they sent you. Yeah, they sent a, they sent another one. one. They sent Jan one at the same time. So I think they were just doing did, a new. Did uh, they round. send you that case for it too, so you don't break it again? Yep. <laughs> yes, they did. Uh, I, the Lucas Pope's game is six dollars on the store on here. I will get that because I love Lucas Pope games. We were talking about Return of the Obra Dinn. Um, but, but I will make up to it. Make it up to him for not putting his game on the uh, top five by buying his game. You can blame me. Uh, Seraphis King says Fall seventy six is good now. Actually, no, really, no. I know it's. I, I know it's uh in a pretty good place now. But can you imagine? Can you imagine what? 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 what, what we really got into Fall seventy six now. Like fuck me, no way. Yeah, it's that seems insane. Do you think there's more active players on Fallout seventy six than uh, 
skull and bones right now? We can check that right now. Check you, you check Fallout you, you 76 check versus what, Suicide Squad? Starfield. Starfield, wow. Starfield. Right. Um You think Fallout they're gonna make like a big expansion for Starfield. I wonder what that's gonna be like. Yeah, they got a ton of updates and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um we'll keep reading super chats while he checks that. Yeah. yeah. Willow Davis says, do not put rum dum to dum dum too, please. Yeah, don't worry, it didn't make it. Yeah, now we're caught up there. Thank you. That was a close one, everybody. God, <laughs> right. I would, oh, that would have been rough. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Hitting again. Uh, yeah, I mean, Starfield, I'm, I bet Starfield does have more, but I mean, how much more, honestly? He has like, Starfield has like 5,000 and. And also 5,000. No. Like, they will, yeah. No close. Right now, 5,000, 5,000. Yeah. Almost All right, the same. Did, okay. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I don't, think, I don't think it should be that close. No. Starfield has a little bit more, 5,275. <laughs> All right. That's great. Um, I, I think if I were to go play one of those games right now, I would would rather play Fallout 76 than Starfield at this point. Um, I agree. I, I, I enjoyed my time with Starfield. I did. Uh, but yeah. I beat that game, and I don't think about, oh, I have stuff unfinished that I, I, and all this stuff that would be possible if I went back there. I just don't think about that game in those terms. Um, yeah. I don't, and, I, and I haven't really played Fallout you, 76, so that's a different thing. Well, what I really want, I, what I really want still is to watch you play Fallout New Vegas. That still's got to happen. Yes, that does have to happen. God, I I, I mean... You do that, Jam, plays, Jam plays, uh Coaster. We're just going to play some 2000s-era com like computer yeah. RPGs or you know, Western RPGs, that'd be fun. Which Man. one can I play? I'll play Vampire the Masquerade or oh, that, something. That I would love to watch that. I mean, I, I, it would kind of rule if games would slow down a little bit. It would kind of rule to go back and play some old games that I haven't finished before. I would adore that. Um, it is like fitting so much stuff into that. Like today was one of those days where it's like, okay, work all day, get all, get all this stuff done, go from one thing to the next. And as soon as work is done, it's like Steph's got work stuff that she needs me to like get the kids out of the house because she was like having an important meeting with like a huge company and it was like they can't she couldn't have kids yelling in the background so it's like okay well i will help you with that and, and then immediately get home get them a bath and as soon as that's done run to this it's like man this is it's kind of what life is for me right now at the moment um so if i could get to a point where i didn't also have to juggle five or six new games i wanted to play at the same time that would be good for me just for a little bit all right everybody till next time have a good one take care of yourselves Goodbye. Bye. I don't get horny. I stay horny. <laughs> Damn. Damn, you can't just say that. Three inches of girth? What? Back, Lar. It's a clean show, guys. What are you even doing here? How'd you get in here? <laughs> Master Chief comes. <laughs> at the classic. That's the OG. He can fuck them, battle fuck me. <laughs> I'm such a stupid asshole.